Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, hast thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from. If it looks like in a particular season you are not anointed or no longer as anointed as you want, it may not be that you have backslidden. It may have been that you have, you have not found where the word is for the season. Because the word for the season is where the anointing for the season is. That you were anointed yesterday does not mean that your anointing of yesterday will be relevant for today's challenge. Are we together? God is in the business of lifting men. And he's lifting us not just because um, we need to tell the world we are successful. That's too small a reason to be lifted. I told you that kingdom advance can only be possible under two conditions. Number one, evangelism. Number two, influence. Influence is important to enthrone Christ within a sphere of human existence. And so if we do not contend for influence if the only thing that happens to us is evangelism winning souls which is important and valuable then the church will not have a voice enough to institutionalize christ and his value system within society are we together it matters that the church not only has the word but have the voice to declare that word we must contend for the requisite level of influence that will make our words matter not only to fellow believers but to to every strata of human society business government media etc are you following me now so the subject of greatness is something that i want you to covet passionately we come from different backgrounds even christian backgrounds and some of us though well-meaning but have been erroneously indoctrinated into believing that any desire to want to rise to a position that is higher than than that which mediocrity affords is carnality and you shouldn't be interested in that let me tell you in the 21st century if you do not have a voice then there are certain things you cannot do for the kingdom are we together when it was time to bring a dream that will save the nation god searched around to look for who was from him and there was no believer who had the influence to do something about that dream so god had to make do with pharaoh god went to pharaoh and gave him the dream about the redemption of egypt and then god's people because pharaoh was the only one who had the requisite influence to do something about it are we together there are certain levels of visions and revelations that you will never see no matter how you fast and pray because you do not have the influence to do anything about it are we together if god shows you something about a family that requires some kind of financial capability to solve their needs if you do not have the financial wherewithal you can only intercede so god will not waste his time bringing you that kind of dream he will find someone who has opened himself to that possibility in the kingdom and grant him access to that revelation because in seeing it he also has the ability to do something about it are we together it will no longer be that the church will buy a plot of land or plots of land and then the government will arise and seize it simply because everyone is in the church is spiritual anointed but with no voice jesus remained on the cross no influence could bring him down 
but a man called joseph of arimathea the bible called him a noble man he had both the political and financial power he went to caesar and demanded that jesus be brought down where would you keep him caesar said and he said no i have a virgin tomb and they took jesus and buried him there influence played a role in the salvation of our souls are we together now it matters that we rise to positions of kingdom influence thou shall increase give us that scripture please thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me round about why for the sake of your kingdom why for the sake of your glory for the sake of the advancement of your purposes thou shall increase my finances and comfort me round about thou shall increase the anointing upon my life and comfort me round about thou shall increase my sphere of influence thou shall increase my strategic alliances thou shall increase my voice thou shall increase the capacity my mind everything that needs to be increased should be increased in this season are we blessed and comfort me roundabout there are people here you are here seated many of the prayer requests that you are going to be submitting requires influence for it to be answered it doesn't just require God a man can answer that prayer are we together influence all you need is for someone to talk to someone to advocate for someone on your behalf and that whole prayer point that is giving you headache is solved in a moment it's amazing how influence can represent Christ in a moment in a twinkling of an eye a challenge that has held a family a nation a territory just within a moment greatness is powerful you will never be able to legislate on behalf of the kingdom if you do not contend for certain dimensions of greatness and influence hallelujah this is a very powerful scripture that should be your prayer request in this season there are pastors who are anointed they love god they have revelation but they have rejected kingdom influence and it has pegged them down peg their ministries peg everything about them let me tell you something about followership nobody wants to follow a man who is not growing nobody wants to follow a man who is not rising are we together now yes For as long as we continue to celebrate mediocrity, for as long as we continue to allow ourselves to be, um, the Bible says, they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise. For as long as we remain at the lowest levels in life, let me tell you this, we may keep feeling spiritual, but there is very little God will be able to do with us. It's true. When you increase in greatness, you give God space to find expression in and through you. In this season, God is passionately finding men who will embody influence with a heart for him. So that he will be able to win people. Winning people one by one will not get the job done. We need to win territories through influence. Are we together now? Yes. Islam is one of the fastest growing religion in Europe and you will never see any city-wide crusade you will never see any venue being rented for any conference they are using one key everybody say influence because when a man is hungry you don't give him a bible when a man is hungry you put the gospel on a plate of a loaf of bread and give it to him that's the only way he can eat that he can receive it are we together You've heard me say it again and again by the grace of god i will never pastor a people who are spiritual but not influential both can go hand in hand now every time you are doing things that are new or out of the box you will be misunderstood because society is full of status quo and most of those those systems are largely founded upon mediocrity the average believer does not understand how the kingdom should be advanced they know how you should grow 
they know how you should rise they know how your spirit man should be strong but they don't know how the purposes of god should be institutionalized within a territory the subject of kingdom advance is seldom understood by many people very few people i tell you this with 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 no sense of of um criticism or whatever but even among us men of god there are very few people who understand kingdom advance we understand spiritual growth we understand the issues that concern our growth and character and so on and so forth but the issues that have to institutionalize christ so that 30 years after now our children will still be rooted in the things of god we hardly have that understanding and living in the 21st century has shifted things we must learn how to shift we must learn how to be strategic in our approach hallelujah the message remains the same but the communication must be strategic enough to be able to represent christ are we blessed thou shall increase my greatness before i continue i just feel we should pray this prayer in one minute i don't know what area listen greatness is a summation of excellence in many facets of your life some of us may be doing well in one area may be doing well in another area find the area where you know you cannot say you are experiencing greatness in and in one minute cry to god and say lord visit me in this area go ahead pray with all your heart lord you have granted me access to revelations i thank you stepping over my finances lord you have helped me in the area of my finances but my spiritual life is crushing to pieces grant me grace you have granted me access to revelations but my mind my mind is barren i need a miracle in my mind increase my capacity understanding make sure you are praying this is the miracle service many of the challenges that we have in our lives are dependent on these things whether you are standing whether you are at the window whether you are everywhere following online just go ahead and connect don't allow the little inconveniences to distract you it's a very serious prayer everyone that asketh receiveth lord increase my greatness increase my greatness comfort me increase my greatness for the sake of my family members increase my greatness for the sake of the gospel increase my greatness for the sake of the ministry the church you have committed increase my greatness for the sake of the lost souls millions billions of them increase my greatness for the sake of having your purposes preserved within a territory hallelujah praise the lord are we blessed let me just talk about one key there are many but for tonight just to add to what i've shared just one key that can help us grow in greatness greatness is a system remember that the kingdom of god operates on mysteries and systems say after me mysteries say after me systems the kingdom of god is systemic god never does the same thing twice when he does a thing once he creates a system around it for continuity are we together he never created the plants and the animals twice he did it once and put a seed in it for reproduction he made one man one woman never to make another one again are we together there is a system so if your life is to excel it must be built on systems if your life is built on miracles as much as you are going to receive them miracles are a sign that something went wrong and the sovereignty of god is intervening to correct we were never designed to live off miracles listen very carefully if you live off miracles you will live a frustrated life we live off principles we live off the systems of the kingdom the systems of god create predictability they are an attestation to his justice the bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne never mistake a miracle to mean that's how god wants it to continue a miracle is a stepping in of god to correct something that shouldn't be you are working properly when your life is systemic 
Are we together? First Corinthians chapter 4, please. Give us verse 1 and verse 2. Let's talk about just one key here, faithfulness. Say after me, faithfulness. Second Corinthians chapter 4. It says, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ. Paul is speaking now. And stewards. Paul uses a very interesting language. Not, not owners. He calls them stewards. The word steward is the word caretaker. Caretakers of the mysteries of God. Number two, it says, moreover, it is required in stewards. If it is true that you are a steward, there is a requirement. And it says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man, whoever says he is a steward, must exhibit a character called faithfulness. Faithfulness. It says, must be found faithful. There are many people who may never rise beyond their current levels of influence, their current financial level, their levels of the anointing of revelation because they have other things, but they lack this quality, faithfulness. In the kingdom, you grow. It looks simple, but write it. In the kingdom, you grow. And Jesus grew in wisdom jesus grew in stature jesus grew in favor with god and with men we live in a time where we admire people's results every time we see uncommon results whether in the area of the anointing the demonstration of the spirit revelations influence etc every time we see that people are stepping into unusual levels of grace we don't admire the process we rather admire the results hallelujah i see people come to me and i know they are well-meaning and they just kneel down and say sir double portion of your anointing and i said look at what this guy is asking are we together it looks like a very that's why some of you came here probably to get a double portion the mother of james and john came to jesus and said jesus i have a request on behalf of my two sons you've been seeing them you've, you've you see how faithful they have been in your ministry would you grant because the way you are going you are going to overthrow caesar would you grant that when all is said and done let my kids sit at your left and right and jesus looked at her he never said it's an impossible request he said can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism two things one works internally the other one works externally but both must happen to qualify you the seat is vacant but can you drink this one is not a gift it's a reward are we together now one of the requirements is faithfulness there are pastors who will never rise beyond certain membership barrier because they are not faithful god gives you three members you look at them and feel they are not relevant at all are we together oh these members are not serious you are three all of you are broke none of you is smart none of you is working i'm the one who pays your transport what kind of useless membership is this and god is watching and then you admire another church with choice uh what do we call it choice membership this one is working in oil company i said these, these are the kind of members and we we have the effrontery to go back to the secret place and cry that god will find a way of drawing those people from that church to bring it to our church and god says look at this the kind of believers that are being produced within this region no understanding it is required in stewards in men of god in business people in young people in students in whatever dimension of life that you be faithful listen very carefully be faithful be faithful never follow a man who does not have a track record of growth you are only wasting your time no matter how flamboyant the results are it's a mirage anybody who stumbles into financial prosperity is joking is joking i repeat is joking anybody who just stumbles into the anointing is still joking anybody who stumbles into revelation is joking 
there must be a track record in life your track record is what gives value to your current stature faithfulness here's what jesus has to say about this luke chapter 16 please give us verse 10 to 12. jesus is teaching here luke chapter 16 10 to 12. he says he that is faithful listen now jesus is teaching here it was the the parable of of the unjust servant whose master was about to banish him and he went to reduce the bills for several people so that when he was banished he would now rush to them and jesus is using the opportunity to teach us something here that he that is faithful in that which is least is what he didn't say will be is already i can know whether you qualify for your next level in life by what you are doing with the current level is faithful also in much and he that is unjust please go back to verse 10 he that is unjust in the least is also unjust in much next verse 11 if therefore ye have not been faithful he's speaking in the context of resources now in unrighteous mammon your naira and kobo he says who will commit to you the true riches you know what the true riches are things that money cannot buy but can buy money true riches money itself is a commodity there is something that buys it true riches are you getting what i'm saying now in our world today if you have money you can buy everything but god is saying that money itself like you sell phones money is a product too there is something that can buy it it's called true riches so when god tests you let me tell you what this is saying let me use um let me bring out a thousand naira look at this this is one thousand naira do you know god can arrange favor come pastor femi i can see him already warming up to be a very can i mean look at the see how sharp he's looking praise the lord now watch this do you know that in your walk with god a time can come god can just open a door for you hundred thousand comes you are not rich this is unrighteous mammon he's testing you you are rich when he gives you what can buy this you are not rich if you have this this, this is nonsense anything can happen set this on fire you can't pack the ashes to court and say this was one thousand true riches is what can buy this product not shoe buy this this one so he's watching you and he gives you this and you are not faithful in it you misuse it you waste it the kingdom does not benefit from it he says no there is an anointing i can give you that will bring this you have not qualified i tested you with this and you failed are we together god can bring a relationship come god can bring a relationship to your life that you know you didn't even qualify for it is a test you misuse that relationship you take advantage of the people and you don't even max you don't value them and then all of a sudden you cannot be given the true riches that can buy greater relationships faithfulness is a powerful spiritual quality powerful spiritual quality many people are not faithful that's why they pray they fast oh god dry fast seven days 40 days lord give me more anointing give me this give me that and then one day god leads you to one old woman and god says take care of this woman your destiny is to walk in the healing ministry but he won't start by giving you the healing anointing he will start by creating compassion in you take care of this old woman and say oh god this old woman how much will i get from this woman i need something that i will shine so that from that shining to be on youtube and then it will be on all the social media platforms and up i go and god says you see that there's no faithfulness and while that is happening god is watching one young lady somewhere taking care of the woman mama are you okay and she's she's writing 
her promotion exams through faithfulness she may not know but she's walking herself to a realm of the anointing one day she'll finish taking care of that woman and say father thank you for the privilege my mother was never alive for me to be able to take care of her but thank you for giving me such an old woman and the heavens are open over that young lady a strange anointing comes upon her two years later that lady is walking in a dimension of the healing anointing that nobody can explain and people criticize where did this girl come from from nowhere i've told you there's nobody that comes out from nowhere that you are not aware of the training does not mean they were not trained there is nobody that comes out of nowhere it's a lie when you are in the cave of adulam it's a lonely place when you manifest people say aha this person is lucky no there's no luck in this thing is god speaking to us many of us god trusted us with finances we were not faithful many of us today if i tell you lift your prayer request now you will see prayer point one breakthrough prayer point two financial rest prayer point three financial favor it's still the same thing you are writing just different versions so that however god wants to answer it he should just answer it are we together lord increase in membership did you know while i was praying i was already set to come the rain started all i was doing i i found tears coming out of my eyes because i was thinking i said my god my god this these people now how 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 do we manage these people but many of you ah, they've come let them come you know you are the superstar when you think like that you will never rise don't forget that men may not know why you are looking at this but there is a God who has the all-seeing eye that looks at you and knows that this man of God should not rise. Are we together? Many of us want resources. As I've lifted this 1,000 now, many of you have been looking at it. You are not even hearing me again. Listen. You are not faithful. If you are faithful is proof that you are a steward can God give you this and say let me have it back and you say Lord it's yours It's proof of faithfulness Lord after all it came from you I, I you took me from nowhere soaking Gary if you have given me this if you make a demand it goes there are many of you once your hands hold it it's only a need a secular need that will release it the voice of god has no right to make you release this and then you want lots of it and we keep joking that we are having dreams and seeing god is not stupid this system is very orderly once your heart is not with god you won't find anything are we together i've shared this story here once upon a time in this area then nobody knew me nobody i was invited to go and minister somewhere and just like it rained very heavily tonight i had prepared fasted prepared to go there and then the rain started and the people were expecting me and that time there was no protocol to come put umbrella etc all of these formalities that was how i i rolled my sleeves rolled my trouser and held my bible i started praying in tongues in the rain lord don't mind me being soaked just bless your people if your people are blessed i am satisfied are we together now i remember going there and then to make matters worse the church didn't even make arrangement for umbrella to receive me it was then steve strings who saw me from outside and collected he was also invited he collected an umbrella to run go and receive me outside when i came in they asked me to wait they had to shift some people in front to create space for me to come and sit down it looked painful it looked ego stinging but it was a test of faithfulness can you be faithful even when your reputation is being insulted not everybody will insult your reputation keep forbearing with those who don't value you then you will qualify for those who can value you there are some of you today you will go to minister somewhere they will disrespect you some of you are intelligent business people surrounded by those who have no value keep at what you are doing 
you will come to a point where God will bring you to people who can recognize the grace you carry and my goodness happy are you when you enter that season in your life where you are surrounded by those who have a recognition of what you carry and will be willing to bless my life was not always like this this ministry was not always like this the first crusade you see crowds everywhere and we're happy many of you who follow me on facebook or follow follow the ministry uh, on facebook and follow what we are doing and you know all the crowds and the things that happen when every time i travel many people just see it and think it's just because he's anointed it's not just because i'm anointed with all humility what you are seeing is a product of many years of faithfulness i've shared with you our first crusade it never you see the secrets of men are in their stories don't just hear the story discern the message are we together i told you about our first crusade i think we're about 20 or so the entire crusade ground i'm not sure we're up to 50 the first crusade we prayed fasted organized when it was time to pray for the sick the whole team had the opportunity one on one it was a test of faithfulness many of us do not want to start small as a student you want to wear the same cloth with a bank manager and so you open your gate wide for a devourer to come and rubbish your life and keep punishing you are we together there are men of god who start in ministry everybody they see is their colleague take it easy move gradually no i'm anointed if not because of condition don't i have a better revelation than kenny and god keeps you there say stay there i just caught a new revelation there's nobody to hear you because there is no track record you can look at a pastor who doesn't seem to have any serious revelation and wonder why god keeps him there faithfulness all he may say is god bless you god lift you god anoint you and then you are there in your pride and arrogance i just finished pieces in the book of ephesians and you remain there for many years is god speaking to us never be ashamed of the track record of faithfulness lord this is the level of grace that you have given me i am happy i am proud of it lord you have given me the anointing to clean chairs i know that you have called me to be an apostle to the nations but in this season my assignment is to clean chairs i receive the grace to do it faithfully not just to clean chairs and say kai oh god if not just people me cleaning chairs and god says that's it you see that and you'll never rise everybody say faithfulness say it again faithfulness matthew chapter 25 we're going to read three verses 21 23 and 29 thank you matthew 25 we're reading 21 23 and we're reading 29 i just want to show you something and then we'll begin to pray this was the parable of the talents five two and one talent and this to the one who had five his lord said unto him after being faithful he said well done good and what faithful servant thou has been faithful over a few things let me show you how greatness happens in the kingdom thou has been faithful over a few things what's your reward i will make thee ruler over many things when you are promoted in the kingdom many things happen to you one the anointing upon your life is multiplied number two your operation becomes easy number three god expands your self-influence to cause more people to hear your voice is a product of faithfulness you have been faithful over a few things i gave you a teaching anointing and i did not give you an anointing for miracles and you were not ashamed to teach the people as best as you knew to every time they ask you man of god why is it that we don't see miracles in your life be patient i'm coming i'm not ashamed to say god is bringing me there for now is the teaching grace he has given me i will teach i will make bible study notes and god is saying this is a man who will not only be a good shepherd he will be a good manager of my anointing and one day that man comes to a meeting 
and all of a sudden an impartation comes upon him the dimension that has been absent is now supplied by the spirit he goes back not just as a teacher but as a worker of miracles 23 to the man with the two talents he said his lord said unto him well done good and faithful servant same thing thou has been faithful over a few things so it's not the size of what you were given the same commendation i will make thee ruler over many things let's go to 29 29 for unto everyone that hath this is a mystery in the kingdom that when you have is a sign that you were a good manager and the reward is that he shall have what abundance of anything abundance here doesn't just talk of finance abundance of the anointing abundance of influence abundance of access to revelations and then it says but from him that had and is not faithful now he says even that which he had shall be taken away it is not only satan that takes things away god too takes things away are we together now not every reduction is caused by demons there are reductions that are a testimony it's a report card from god to you that something is wrong with your stewardship when god increases you members rise today and mysteriously members just go down sometimes it could be that it's a message from god that i trusted you with 30 people and i observed your stewardship your stewardship does not merit multiplication you rise in finances and then sometimes you just go down never to rise again it could be a message that you need to upgrade on your stewardship you rise in influence and all of a sudden you find out within a season all your helpers are no longer there all the people whose voice who who listen to your voice and acknowledge your voice are no longer there it could be a sign that you are abusing the privilege of stewardship are we together the prayer that you need to pray in this season is for God to help you that whilst you are waiting for a supply of greater dimensions of his grace but that he grants you the fortitude to be faithful if God gives you 10 naira be faithful if God gives you one shoe polish it don't sit down running your eyes on every shoe and say don't worry except God is not my God I'm coming and and that shoe will say you are not coming this is not how to get me you get me by washing the one you have it's a rubber shoe wash it it's a 200 naira trouser wash it are we together now we live in a society that applauds people for living a fake life that claps for people for jumping seasons and as soon as they clap for you and as frequent as they clap for you that's the same way they will clap against you because every time you jump up you must go down but when you grow up you remain up the difference between jumping and growing is that you are still connected to your root when you jump you are suspended nothing backs you no support so you must come down when you grow up the tallest building in the world is still connected to the earth that's why it stands nothing suspended has an a, a, the ability to stay indefinitely when they send satellites to orbit the earth and orbit other planets and all of that after a time requirement because they are not connected to the earth they must be sent back planes don't fly indefinitely in the sky they get to a point where they must make contact with the earth again for some of you here this is your miracle service tonight the Lord is speaking to you you are living a fake life go back to the basics let me tell you this don't ever generalize success just because everybody around you is successful does not mean you are successful go back and learn the principles corporate success is deception are you hearing what I'm saying now 
we are all successful a day will come life will separate you and you stand as an individual and it will be a test of your values whether or not it's like a defense the way students do defense you will need to defend and validate your success any door god has not opened for me i'm not under pressure to go because when he opens it he will open it in honor do you know if god does not open a door your tenacity can force that door to open that you forced a door and it opened a man can go around with complimentary cards i'm a man of god i'm a gospel artist in fact you've not had anything like you just invite me and watch what happens you can go around and out of the 1000 invitations you beg for you may get one or two or three or four and you call it increase you see when you open the door by yourself you have to keep it open by yourself but when god opens it god when he opens it he keeps it by his own hand the hands that lifted me will uphold me to the end i will not be afraid there is a hand that lifted me will uphold me to the end i will not be hallelujah yes ago i had a conversation we're about to pray with a gentleman and he asked me a very honest question he said apostle I've come for koinonia and I've seen the crowds of people and he asked a question he said can you reproduce these results and I said that's not me to answer you are asking time not me keep watching and I think two weeks ago he sent me a text you know just joking I'm, I'm just saying it and he's just sent a text and he said apostle you are dangerous I say I'm not dangerous the laws of God are dangerous it is not me it is the laws of God whoever will keep these truths it will work for you are you getting what I'm saying even if you are afraid of yourself trust his laws and watch them shock you and make a wonder out of your life brothers and sisters listen to me in a few minutes now we're going to begin to pray and many of you will stand and watch your life change as if it's magic it is not just because a man who is anointed is standing before you there is a system in the kingdom we make our boast first in the lord and then in the power of his might his might the power of his might the power that is released when his laws operate those who don't understand will look at these things and think it's boasting it's not boasting it's true the predictability of god's principles hallelujah i challenge you today that much more than the miracles you are receiving you must trust god to go back and say lord teach me your ways we reign in this kingdom we're about to pray now i want to show you a very dangerous scripture that god opened my eyes to brothers and sisters if god does not open your eyes to see how a thing works you may never know do you know that in every challenge that you have right now a way of escape is there but it takes god to open your eyes psalm 77 turn there let me show you something psalm 77 and verse 19 psalm 77 verse 19 give us from amplified if it's possible lion of judah my trust is in you alpha and omega my trust is in you i am that i am my trust is in you tonight i put them on you my trust is in you he says your way in delivering your people was through the sea listen carefully the same sea that was an obstacle he said their way of escape was inside that water 
inside that trouble he says and your path through the great waters how can you be in trouble and god says in that trouble that's where your answer is but it takes your eyes to see it god hides a formula in your pain and keeps it there until revelation opens you to it he says your way of delivering your people was through the sea the same sea he said that your path through the water yet you pass through it and cover it and nobody can trace your footsteps this one give us king james again it will take revelation for you to know how can i look at a water challenges and great waters he said thy way is in the sea in that rain challenge is a formula that can make you a landlord but it will take the spirit of revelation in that sickness that brought you to koinonia is hidden a mystery that can bring you into the healing anointing it says thy way is in the sea and thy path in the great waters and thy footsteps are not known god what kind of god are you you do something and cover it so no man can just look and say ah i ah. but when he opens your eyes all of a sudden you will discover that so the water can part i never knew and all of a sudden there will be dry ground and you walk to it and the egyptians will think and god will cover it and say i don't open it for everybody it is a way but not for everybody are we together these are some of the deep mysteries about the anointing sometimes you see me give you instructions that don't make sense shout jesus keep quiet it does you will try it and it won't work it's a mystery there is a way in it there is a pathway that when god opens your eyes to the systems of the kingdom then you can see things that don't make sense and make wonders out of them god is speaking to someone here that the prayer you are praying the answer is already within your environment all it takes is for your eyes to see Hagar was punished by Sarah. The Bible says she was in the wilderness dying of test. The young lad cried to heaven. When an angel appeared, all of a sudden they saw an oasis bringing water. The water was there, but her eyes could not see. The ways of God. And let me tell you, this is why we come to, how, to the house of God. Because there is something about the corporate gathering of God. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Go ahead and read. Thy ways, O God, where is it? Is found in your sanctuary. When we come here, it says in your sanctuary, in your house, you have, you have ordained a place that when we meet, you will show us a way. When God put this miracle service and called this ministry and put all of these things, it's not just a ritual. There is a mystery about the sanctuary he has ordained. That every time you come before God, he must open a way. So don't carry your challenges and come and you are wondering and say, I went to every church. I don't know what the church you went to believe. But in this sanctuary, there is a way there is a way i dare to tell you there is a way man of god i have been in i've gone everywhere with all due respect i don't know where you went to but there is a way in the sanctuary solomon dedicated a place and said lord let me tie a covenant to this sanctuary if any man prays and turns this direction not for the sake of their faith for the covenant in this place answer them when they were about to kill daniel in the days of that of, of nebuchadnezzar daniel opened the gate and faced jerusalem he, he was afraid he couldn't depend on his faith he opened the door and said lord i engage the covenant that covenant that solomon made with the temple in jerusalem it is not only a man that can bring miracles a place can be anointed to birth miracles it was in a place that jacob went to sleep he never met a man but he met a place and that night the heavens were open and he saw a ladder that connected the heavens he said this is the house of god this is the gates of heaven 
tonight I want to stir up faith many of you have come you have made sacrifices Pastor Femi thank you thank you so so much praise the Lord many of you have come from several places you have made sacrifices please don't come here wasting your time and don't come here wondering let's see what God will do already I can answer you you won't get anything already let me let me be honest with you because God is not a magician but there are people that come here determined and say Lord I have seen you in this place I can't go back this way that something must shift in my life something must change in my life not all of you may be trusting God for sickness for healing you know but many of us are trusting God for one thing or the other I like you to believe there is a way in the sea I bring you a word there is a way this kingdom operates by mysteries the Bible says there is no temptation given but that which is common to man you are not the first to have house rent issue you are not the first to have financial issues listen carefully you are not the first to have academic issues you are not the first to have excuse me spiritual issues you are not the first but though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river. that's a part of this song i like though we are few there are witnesses there are people who have been healed there are people who god changed their lives overnight there may not be many but they are on earth testifiers of his faithfulness as a testament that if god did it before he can do it again. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Oh, is the Lord. Oh, is the Lord. Listen. It is our confidence in God and our confidence in his ways that gives us the audacity to gather people and say come he will change you without the presence of god and access to the ways of god we are we are scammers we are not we are not just liars we are scammers why do you gather people and tell them come we dare you to come we call a solemn assembly not only because we know god by the privilege of his grace we have found grace with him and he has made us stewards of the mysteries ephesians chapter 3 this will be the last scripture ephesians chapter 3 verse 2 from verse 2 it says if ye have heard paul is speaking of the dispensation of grace of the grace of god which is given me to you word for your sake how that by revelation verse 3 he made known unto me how did paul know it by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote afore in few words verse 4 whereby when you read another word is whereby when you experience it you may know the basis he may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ verse 5 a mystery that has been hidden in other ages let me tell you some of the things we are doing although they are spiritual although they are biblical they are mysteries that have been hidden they are there the same way many people swam through the red sea although there was a way it took a generation of men to be open to that mystery there are many mysteries that control results that have not been routed by many but the bible says that in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets how by the spirit by the spirit it was a revelation that god gave me that people write their requests and come and drop here it's not something that i copied from anywhere it's a revelation stupid though but look at the testimonies that have come out from it are we blessed now god's servant bishop david oyedeko was given 
the revelation of feet washing a revelation that had not been known to anybody people read it and all of a sudden the testimonies that come out of it people had communion people take communion in orthodox churches and different churches and just take it even while they are drunk but somebody came with a light about communion and all of a sudden people take communion now and cancers just die there are mysteries brothers and sisters there are many people that never knew that the house of god is powerful praise the lord are we together so you must understand that god in this season wants to shift you but he won't just shift you just by saying shift there are mysteries tonight i bring you a word there is a way in the sea hallelujah there is a way there is a way there is something god can do about your finances there's something god can do about your family situation you left fire on the mountain and came back you wait until the red sea parts and god will rubbish pharaoh tonight in your presence rise up on your feet begin to thank the lord for what you have heard tonight Cry for the grace to be faithful. Go ahead. Cry for the grace to be faithful. Cry for the grace to be faithful. Lord, grant me the grace to be faithful. Grant me the grace to stay as you lift me. Grant me the grace not to rush seasons in my life grant me the grace grant me the grace hallelujah just pray one prayer lord change my story visit me tonight lift your voice and pray pray with faith change my story visit me visit me tonight hallelujah tonight is an unusual service because time has gone we're going to be very very fast very very fast at that um, like I told us we're going to start praying for the sick we'll start by praying for the sick and um, now this is how we're going to do it because of because of those of you outside don't worry you don't worry wherever you are you will be attended to are we together you will be attended to so hold on before i ask the people to come you don't have to just cooperate with the ushers if they need you to do anything just just it's a temporary inconvenience we're doing this just to be able to manage time and to do all that we have to do hallelujah praise the lord now please hold on let's let's not be distracted those of us who are trusting God for healing is a miracle service. It's not just limited to healing, but we're going to pray for the sick now. Now, we're going to do this very fast. And um, please, those that will be ministering, let's, let's do it very fast. It's not in how long... Listen, let me tell you something about the anointing. It's not just in how long you are touched or the frequency. Just a touch is enough for the anointing. The same way a small drug can step into your body and that's it the wonders are done i'd like you to believe god to touch you change your life whether it's a blood disease whatever it is let's agree with you hallelujah we'll do that very very fast while we are doing that please um if you have come with your requests ushers um please help them pr department you can join them protocol let's just join and see how we can make this very fast so that at the same time we are collecting the prayer requests remember it's not a ritual 
um, when it's time, when they come to you, you can hand over the request. If you are yet to write yours, you can quickly do that. Those online following us from whatever nation, you can just connect. Your requests are already there and we are praying the power of God will touch it there too. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, I'd like you to be very intentional. I know that most times we do this at the miracle services, but be careful lest you make a ritual out of this. And then at the same time, waste your time. I have seen the power and the glory of God um, upon my life and upon this ministry in, in ways that, that are humbling, in ways that are powerful, expected testimony. Please refuse that you're not going back the way you came. No matter what the medical situation is, remember I told you there is a way in the sea. There is a way. Hallelujah. When I do that, um, we'll finish it and then we can now minister deliverance and just prophesy so that we are able to make time. Praise the Lord. Father, we are gathered tonight by your wisdom and your power. Lord, we are about to minister to those who are sick. And Lord, we trust your power to heal. We trust your power to heal to the uttermost. In the name of Jesus. Anoint my hands. Anoint every man and woman of God who will be ministering to the sick. Let there be the hearing of faith. Let there be the working of miracles. Do this and glorify yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Uh, Father, we give you all the praise. Let your power flow. Let miracles begin in this place. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Please make sure that while you submit your prayer request, be in the attitude of prayer. If I were you, I'll be praying in the spirit. Don't be distracted just because we are taking our time to pray for the sea. God bless. Deserve the glory and the honor. So we lift our hearts and worship as we bless your holy name. Yes, you deserve the glory. The honor. Yes, Lord, we lift our hands and worship as we praise your holy name. For you are great, you do miracles so great. Yes, there is no one else. There is no one else like you Yes, you are great And you do miracles so great Oh, there is no one else like you Oh, there is no one else like you Sing, you deserve the glory. Say, you deserve the glory and the honor, Lord, and the honor. So we lift our hands, so we lift our hands and words as we praise. As we praise oh, 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 yes, you deserve the glory. we worship tonight so we lift our hands and worship as we pray your holy name give you your You are great. You do miracles. 
is no one else, Lord. There is no
every other name fade away. Let every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. Let every other name fade away. Yes. 
Everyone say after me in the name of Jesus. We are praying now, please. We are praying. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every force from the pit of hell standing against my lifting tonight I challenge you lift your voice and begin to pray everyone lift your voice and begin to pray every force every force nothing will stop your lifting this is a season of lifting Every circle shall be broken. You were the victor's crown. Say in the name of Jesus. Every recurrent pattern in my life right now, I declare you destroyed. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Challenge every recurrent pattern. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Every recurrent pattern in the name of Jesus. Every recurrent pattern. Papo Sabalaka to Pashabre Legadea. In the name of Jesus. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every dimension of grace apportioned for me tonight. I declare that I must step into it. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension. Make sure you are praying every dimension, every dimension, every dimension. Say in the name of Jesus, Father, let your fire fall upon my life upon my family and destroy every planting that is not of God lift your voice and pray let your fire the visitation of your fire the visitation of your fire upon my life upon my life pray let your fire fall upon my life let your fire bring a separation lift your hands I'm about to pray for you now we are never doing the same thing every time I rebuke devils there are lives and destinies 
that are under the yokes of darkness it's time for the devil to give up are we together are you ready to shout that name that is above all names let me tell you i want you to be childlike tonight and just follow these instructions and watch the wonder working power of god in your life at the count of three i want you to shout that name jesus everywhere and as you shout that name the sword of the lord will pierce through every root of every challenge and begin to command victory for you are we together now especially for those of you who are coming here for the first time i'm ministering deliverance now every yoke of darkness that has tied anyone's life as you shout this name may the visitation of that fire are you ready now one two three I command the fire, the fire of the Spirit. Bring them up, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Right now, every altar and everything, every high thing that is not of God, I curse you now. I curse you now. I curse you now. hallelujah i think the ground is good enough you can bring them in the name of jesus i'm praying now i'm still praying anyone's destiny that is under siege right now i stretch my hands in the name of jesus i'm seeing i'm seeing like bolts of fire falling on people if it falls on you your destiny is opening up lord where are they i stretch my hands may the visitation of fire Open destinies now. Shake it katakata. Open destinies now. Open destinies now. Inside, outside. Open destinies now. Open destinies now. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a horn and I'm seeing fire burning it. Please be sensitive. This is a symbol of authorities that sit over lives and families. He said in Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18, What seest thou? He said, Four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem, against Judah, so that no man does lift his head. He said, But I have sent four carpenters. Lift your heads. I'm praying right now. In the name of Jesus, the fire of God is falling on people inside and outside. In the name of Jesus, anyone here, Shabo Sekatos Kabariakata under any kind of demonic siege at the count of three that horn that symbol of authority that has tied your family that has tied your life it is uprooted one two three i release that fire now i release that fire now i release that fire now by the anointing of the holy ghost I decree and declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost anyone here whose life is under siege be delivered now hallelujah the Lord wants to visit the issue of barrenness but then he's using physical barrenness as a prophetic symbol for productivity so that you are not surprised if you are a man and the anointing still visits you the womb is the place where seed is planted that womb can be anything a woman's womb is just a type and a shadow of a system of increase there are people a barren woman is a woman whose womb cannot receive and multiply seed the way it is physically that's how it is spiritually you receive the word but it never produces it's barrenness you receive finances but it never multiplies it's barrenness lift your hands as i pray listen many people many people are going to be delivered from just this prayer you will be surprised to know that many of your requests are tied to this one prayer lift your hands i'm praying now that in the name of jesus ah, i tell you all i see is just fire that's what i'm seeing every spirit responsible for barrenness in anyone's life right now 
by the fire of the Holy Ghost I declare be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost overflow one I'm seeing three people I'm praying now I know because of time we can't let you come in but I'm seeing three people two are ladies one is a gentleman this prayer is for you there is an anointing as I'm speaking that is coming overflow one on people outside the Lord is bringing massive deliverance barrenness is a dangerous thing listen whatever you give a barren person is as well as wasting your time because it cannot grow it cannot multiply Jesus saw the fig tree it was taken from the earth taken from the earth but it was not producing in the name of Jesus I'm still praying that prayer again that any life here that Satan has rendered barren I stand by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and I decree and declare be delivered right now be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness be delivered right now be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness hallelujah Kemi who is Kemi Kemi um, I may not maybe I may just talk to one or two people Kemi you are wearing red it's like it's a guy called Kemi who is that you are wearing red what's your name uh -uh, I didn't I'm saying this is I'm saying I know that Kemi is a lady's name it's not a guy I will pray for you it's your hunger this is you are wearing red what's your name your name is Kemi. Yes, sir. You are wearing red. I'll pray for you. But gentlemen, you are here. There is a hunger that you carry. Listen, you came from ah, uh, I'm seeing Cross River. Where? Yes, Cross River. Cross River. Cross River. Yes, you sir. came. Yes, sir. The Lord is saying, I should tell you. Listen to me. Yes, sir. You came because of a hunger. Yes, sir. To truly get an anointing. Yes, sir. But you see, this message I preached was for you. You heard what I'm saying? This running around to want to do ministry by force is not the way it works. The Lord himself, he will give you an anointing, but he will give you direction. What you need is an encounter with the word and direction, but you will never go back the same. Receive that anointing, a new dimension, a new season. My dear, there is a spirit of prophecy upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stir up that spirit, that dimension. I open you to a realm where you begin to see and hear the sounds of the spirit in the name of Jesus as I'm praying this I'm seeing number 11 the same thing that came on this lady the anointing of the spirit is looking for 11 people there is the spirit of prophecy where are they I stretch my hands right now 11 people 11 people scattered inside and outside in the name that is above all names receive that spirit you need it i stir it up from your spirit man i stir it up from your spirit man the grace for prophecy makatos kabarakata sons and daughters stepping into dimensions of prophecy some of you you have only had dreams only dreams but i shift you to dimensions of visions prophetic visions You will never be the same i'm still praying this i'm still praying this there are people this is your call but no anointing has ever stirred it in the name of jesus i shift you in the spirit into that anointing the very anointing the seat of the prophetic i move you by grace in the name of jesus christ i activate it i activate it that dimension I'm praying I don't know why God is moving this way there are people the call of God is upon your life but you don't know it you don't know that the call of God is upon your life but tonight as a token the spirit of God is visiting you whether you know it or not Lord where are they I stretch my hands now if the hand and the mandate of God is upon your life 
for your destiny in the area of the fivefold. I declare, let the anointing of the Spirit locate you. As it locates you, the Lord begins to prepare you. Where are they? Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Abaraka toka 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 ta. Shabenda salaba seketa subria katali katosh. Hallelujah. There is a dangerous spirit. Our time is up. Hold on. But there is a spirit that I want to rebuke now. I just saw written in the air rejection. Hold on. Many of you do not know the reason why good things never reach you. You stand, you are watching and an opportunity come. Rejection is not just a state, it's a spirit. Lift your hands. Don't pray, don't do anything, just lift your hands. Hallelujah. That's the instruction the Lord is giving me. Just lift your hands, just do what I'm asking you to do. In the name of Jesus, many of you will be surprised now. There are people, it's like a yoke. I'm seeing like cowries, these cowries that they use. That's what I'm seeing. And in the name of Jesus Christ, as the power of God is smashing that rubbish, that's how many people who have been despised, been despised. The Bible says where you have been forsaken so that no man passes through you. It says you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. Right now, I stretch my hands from the front to the back overflow one two three the roadside and online if there is anyone here under the siege of the spirit of rejection right now in the name of jesus in this silence may the anointing of the spirit begin to bring deliverance right now i'm praying it's happening right now taking away that spirit from your life please be sensitive we are doing a quick walk rejection 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 by the anointing of the Holy Ghost rejection I command that spirit to leave I'm still praying I command that spirit to leave I command that spirit to leave alongside with this there are people bad luck good things must always turn to evil when it hold, when it enters your hand no matter what it is if they give you money something must go bad a good opportunity it must be destroyed you enter a relationship something must happen i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus if there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is under this kind of siege here at this miracle service fire 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 i release the fire of the spirit right now from the front to the back inside outside I command your deliverance right now. I command your deliverance right now. I command your deliverance right now. If you fail an exam and you get 37, you pass some, you just didn't pass enough. But if you get zero, there's no possibility. The Bible says the flesh, there is no good thing, not some, no good thing that means if you dwell in the realm of the flesh you have given satan the biggest advantage over your life it doesn't matter what else you do you have submitted yourself for defeat what is the flesh write this down the flesh is defined as a nature of living thinking and acting that is against the ways of God the flesh a nature of living thinking and acting that is against the ways of God so it affects your life it affects your mind it affects your body every part of you are we together the flesh every time the bible talks of the flesh or the old man has different expressions the the understanding is twofold this is not my major discussion tonight but i want to at least do justice there the the first dimension is what the bible calls the sin nature 
the man who is not regenerate the bible no matter how innocent you are in fact here's how the prophet puts it he said in iniquity did my mother conceive me so he didn't have to do anything directly the very nature of the fallen man one who has not encountered the life the zoe life of god the bible defines that that person born and living in the flesh so the sin nature are we together now the remedy for that is not counseling the remedy for that is the deliverance that we call salvation i hope you know salvation is deliverance yes salvation there is the special deliverance to remedy that nature you can't correct it it's not a nature that you correct it's not a nature that you renew it has to be taken away completely through the substitutionary work of jesus christ only a genuine encounter with the son of god the bible says and this is the record remember that god hath given us what eternal life so way and it says this life is in his son he says so that whosoever has the son has that life he said whoever does not have the son doesn't have that life so there is no assumption as to whether that nature is in you or not if you have not encountered the son no matter how you convince yourself zoe is not in you you may have money you may have education you may feel good about yourself but the nature the very nature just because you feel good about yourself doesn't mean you are free listen listen we're addressing something that is spiritual in context just because you feel you have never done anything wrong in your life doesn't mean you are free are we together now many times our minds and our consciences will deceive us into thinking because we look so far and think we are innocent and then we believe that the innocence brought the nature by itself no there is no assumption about that nature it is taken away only by the blood of the eternal covenant the blood of jesus christ himself and this life is in his son so that whosoever has the son has eternal life if you are not born again that life is not in you period if you are not born again that nature is still at work in you that is the chiefest authorization of satan greater than even any covenant that you have willfully brought yourself under the government of satan that's why i say i set before you the choice is yours life and death i set before you blessing and cursing i can only advise you i can't force you choose life that you may live one of the ways you choose life is to say lord i i i submit to your government i come willingly out of the government and the hold of satan is deliverance the name of that deliverance is salvation as free and cheap as it is you must participate in it otherwise it will not work are you getting what i'm saying now so the sin nature but number two the second dimension of the flesh and and that is that is the one that i think af affects us because i know that a greater number of us here by the grace of god are born again we've given our life to christ and so based on the authority of the word we know that that nature is gone but the second the second dimension of what the bible calls the flesh is a stronghold write it down a stronghold a stronghold a stronghold in our minds that is fortified by the presence of demon spirits a stronghold this is flesh now the bible is talking about a stronghold in our minds that is fortified listen carefully fortified by the presence of demon spirits are we together motivated by self-centeredness vainglory and self-exaltation a stronghold in our minds fortified by the presence of demon spirits that is motivated by self-centeredness write it down self-centeredness vain glory 
vain glory and then number three self-exaltation that's what the bible calls the flesh so when the bible speaks of the flesh within the context of a believer he's talking of a stronghold that is present not in your spirit a stronghold that is present within your mind within the solical realm are we together now that is fortified the fact that it is not can you see that even in your mind demons are still there follow me you will be blessed tonight motivated by self-centeredness remember my teaching christ-centeredness motivated by self-centeredness motivated by vain glory motivated by self-exaltation this the bible says that nature that nature there is no good thing in that nature that means whoever entertains that nature to control and govern your life the result is already predictable there is no good thing no matter how much deliverance gallons and gallons of anointing oil no matter how much prayer and fasting no matter what you do if this nature is allowed unattended to then paul already gives you your faith are you seeing the reason why many deliverance ministries for instance it looks like it's an endless struggle of attempting to do something you can pray dry you can pray all kinds you can do all kinds and and find out that in the midst of it it looks like forever you are casting spirits it looks like forever you are casting spirits it's like a journey of consistently casting spirits this is it and satan knows satan does not mind entertaining you during your deliverance session for as long as he finds out that this is unattended to you can do every other thing you want to do he will be glad to be represented and flatter you into thinking you are so anointed whereas the major issue has not been dealt with a stronghold a stronghold and satan has taken advantage of the church listen very carefully because we have been taught that a believer cannot be possessed that is true but possession is not the only way spirits participate in your life i'm going to be showing you now so we mean that just because a believer is not possessed every other thing that happens is just his thinking that is not working well uh, leave satan out and we have allowed satan to mess up our our understanding the construction of our beliefs and you find out that although you know the zoe life is in your spirit how come in the soul realm you are so helpless to him to the point that it even looks like your salvation is a lie are you ready to follow me on this journey tonight the flesh the bible gives us let me just tidy it up so that we we'll leave this and and just go very quickly the bible tells us what to do with the flesh galatians chapter 5 we'll read 15 to 17 then we'll jump to colossians chapter 3 1 and 2 16 and 7 galatians chapter 5 16 and 17 16 let's start from 16 galatians 5 16 this i say then the same paul is speaking what is the remedy for the flesh walk ye it didn't say receive the spirit walk ye in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh he's telling you this remedy you are not just going to say flesh I'm, I'm tired of you no he's saying you must find a way whatever this is walk ye in the spirit and then you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh 17 he says for the flesh lusted against the spirit notice what is the flesh attacking talk to me what is the flesh attacking that the flesh will look for everything the spirit of god has created for you to do and that's what it fights the assignment of the flesh is to cause you to consistently violate the ways of the spirit and the spirit also that means when you are spirit controlled you will find yourself fighting the attributes of the flesh and the bible said these two these two are contrary the one to another 
so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Let me explain to you what this means. In any case, you are not just allowed to do what you want. There has to be one of them. So you are under conflict. Today you are this, tomorrow you are that. And Paul is saying, let me explain to you that these vacillations is as a result of a war. The war is an attempt by the flesh or the spirit to gain dominance over your life. That you feel so prayerful today and tomorrow you just sit down and say, God, to hell with this Jesus self. I'm not even sure. Paul is saying it's not your fault. I'm explaining to you. At the point you were saying to hell, you are still not on your own. Are we together now? another force another agency you are only executing what that agency has planted within you mm. the flesh people talk so much about the power of god they talk so much about freedom yet they never talk about the flesh and so satan doesn't mind our fasting satan doesn't mind our prayer because he knows that that stronghold is there and what a joy to satan when he finds out that you advise yourself that just because i am in christ automatically the only thing that is left is just for me to keep receiving scripture and as i receive scripture i will change automatically it looks very spiritual but i'll be showing you it's a dimension of deception because many of us have been doing it obediently and it has not been working as always we have been trained to keep quiet and 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 not to be honest enough so we make it look like i'm, I'm okay everything is fine no you are not fine Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 and then we'll go to 1 and 2 then 16 and 17 look at this Paul is now buttressing on what he means by walking in the spirit remember he already told us that when you walk in the spirit you can conquer the flesh one of the ways you walk in the spirit is what read with me one to read if ye then be risen with Christ that means if it is true that you claim that you are risen with Christ it says seek those things which are where above seek those things which are above where Christ seated on the right hand of the father verse 2 set your mind set your affection now he uses something very interesting your affection your affinity your desire your longing set it like you set a thermometer set it to make sure that it is focused on the things above and not on the things that are of the earth are we together and then verse 16 says let the word of christ dwell in you richly now notice it says richly in all wisdom that's a very serious part we neglect it's not just enough for the word of god to dwell in you in terms of verses just he said no wisdom it should be constructed in a way that profits you the word of christ can dwell in you in a way that you are just accumulating scripture but it's not profiting you it says there must be a construction of the word of god in such a way and a manner that that word is done in wisdom then teaching and admonishing one another in psalms spiritual songs singing with grace in your heart from the lord last verse 17 and then we are done now watch this and whatsoever ye do in word or deed do it in the name of the lord jesus christ he's teaching us the various strategies that can help you to walk in the spirit one of it he says set your affections number two do all you do in the name as touching the government and the office that you represent walk in the consciousness of the fact that you are under an authority he's teaching here of the various ways that you can set your mind believers hear me let me tell you sincerely no matter how much prayer and how much fasting and how much casting of a demon that you cast out of someone if that person has made up his mind to be carnal and fleshly and not set your mind on spiritual things i hate to be a bearer of bad news but you only succeeded in wasting your time i give you a guarantee satan has infinite ways of returning back to that person the bible tells us when a spirit leaves a man it doesn't go and say okay i've even satan left jesus for a while he came back again to find out jesus have you been discouraged so far i left you when you were about to start ministry 
if satan left jesus for a while whatever makes you think that just because he left you five years ago he has gone and said okay serve god with all mm -mm. he's waiting for you at the corner of discouragement he's waiting for you where your money finishes he's waiting for you where you have a bad news or where you lose a loved one here he comes again because he knows that these things have a way of seeming to bring us down from that that echelon of spirituality it now brings us down and satan comes the bible says walk ye in the spirit i know you don't like what i'm teaching tonight but it's a powerful formula as simple as it is it's a powerful formula the flesh that stronghold the mistake that many people are now trying to make you see in correcting look at this come there is a difference between transformation happens in the realm of the mind but transformation is spiritual it's a miracle let's not reduce transformation to just the realm of scientology where we say put formula a add b to it no 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 principles are not just scientific formulas principles are spiritual laws that are backed up with the very power and presence of god get this please because when you study online and go around you find out that um sometimes if you are not careful you can just sit down and all you are doing is searching for laws at random just because something is a law and it works you just carry it and throw it in your mind and convince yourself that just because you put in an information that looks superior to what you already know automatically you just go no laws on their own don't drive spirits transformation is a powerful miracle it's another kind of deliverance the first dimension of transformation is not receiving the word the first dimension is the spirit entities that guard that stronghold must be taken away that deliverance must happen to you you can be a pastor prophet apostle bishop whatever you can be and flatter yourself that because of the 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 physical paraphernalia that is around your ministry you are free no you will need that deliverance you can pray in tongues non-stop every day for many years and that stronghold is just quietly watching you you reign you reign hello king you reign you reign talk about deliverance now there are a number of things I want to teach you about deliverance let's talk about demons let's talk a little bit i have to if i don't talk about demons um i'm looking at my course content here can we talk a little about demons matthew chapter 13 verse 24 to 30 let's go to the parable of jesus i want us to study a bit on on demons look at this another parable look up please he put forth unto them saying the kingdom of heaven that means the operation of the kingdom of heaven is likened to this a man which sowed good seed everybody say a man everybody say seed one more time say a man say seed he sowed good seed the fact that the bible specified good seed already is a message are we together 
remember my message during the prayer and fasting 25 but while men slept while men did what his enemy came also having a seed his enemy didn't come with a knife his enemy didn't come with a gun his enemy watched what he sowed and came with his own too watch this and the bible says he came and sowed tears among the wheat and did what and went his way he represented his presence with the seed are we together now he went away when he dropped that seed there he didn't need to stay there again because he knew that the seed was a replica of himself but when the blade was sprung up so that which was a seed now became something else and brought forth fruit then appeared tears also so the servants of the household that came and said unto him sir did did not thou sow good seed in thy field in other words ah, didn't you get born again where did this come from are you not a pastor's child are you not a, 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 a prophet's daughter? Are you not? Is it not you that was baptized yesterday? Where did this come from? From whence then had it tears? 28. And he said, An enemy has done this. And then his servant told him, Will thou that we gather them up? And then he says, Allow it. That's, that's what 29 and 30 says. Lest while we gather up the tears, we root up the wheat in them. And then verse 30 let them both grow together until harvest in the time of the harvest i will say to the reapers gather first the tears that means something will happen in the time of harvest that will show the difference but as it is now you can't see it and if in an attempt watch this if you understand this mystery you will know why you can be doing many things and god will not talk to you about it it doesn't mean that he doesn't see it is because if he wants to circumcise you at that level it will affect your growth process so bad so he will be patient with you to just grow you can be an arrogant man and God will never say anything about your arrogance so you will think that you are all right just because he's not talking about it a day will come as you keep walking with him when he sees that you are now mature to undergo that level of spiritual circumcision he will take you back to the subject of arrogance and you will be surprised that you are in that level of height and now God is dealing with the issue of arrogance the seed the seed this, this demon spirits that we're talking about, we have to understand them. You hear people say demons everywhere. Many of you here in Koinonia and around, you've seen demons come out of people. You've seen their violence. You've seen their aggression. Sometimes you hear people speak, you know, another spirit. Many of you watch TV around or go for meetings. Where you, Who are they? Where, where do they come from? Genesis chapter 3. Let's see how we can look at it. Oh, Jesus. Is God blessing us already? Genesis chapter 3. Give us verse 15. Genesis chapter 3. Let me just touch on it. And that God will grant us grace. Now, by way of introduction to this, I hope you know that Paul the Apostle, Paul the Apostle did not leave us in the dark. As to the fact that when the Bible says darkness is a combination of many things I hope you know that when the Bible says darkness and it says spirits dark spirits is not just one a consummation of just a group of demons it is the summation of every spirit entity and every kind of spiritual organogram that is antagonistic to the ways of God because I'll, as I'll be showing you there are many there are many this is the Lord now speaking with the woman after their fall. I'm just saving time. That's why I said we should go to verse 15. If you're with me, say amen. And I will put enmity. Who is speaking here? God. Between thee and the woman. Between Satan and the woman. God is speaking to them both now. I will put enmity between you, Satan, and the woman. He would have stopped there and then we'll understand. But then he says, I will also put enmity between what? Thy seed and her 
has seed so that the person he's talking to has seed are you getting what i'm saying now he's talking to satan as one who has seed the capacity to multiply himself and his agenda hi and he looks at the woman you don't talk to a woman about seed because you know from biology that women don't have seed they receive seed so the thing confused satan god why are you now talking about her seed where is it going to come from that's why the moment cain came satan believed that cain was that seed and tried to attack him from that day till moses till everybody till john the baptist once satan sees a male that a woman is giving birth to he starts pursuing them because he suspects that that may be the seed are you getting the point now between your seed and her seed now questions we have seen the seed of the woman we are part of that seed correct where is the seed of satan because the bible lets us know very clearly god himself speaking that as the woman is multiplying her own seed this spirit entity is multiplying his own seed too are we together genesis chapter 6 genesis chapter 6 and it came to pass i'm fast forwarding now it came to pass when men began to multiply upon the surface of the earth listen carefully it says and daughters were born unto them what happened verse 2 that the sons of god the hebrew word there is benign elohim it's not just sons of god like it was an error in translation it's not like sons of god like believers no are we together like like progenitors those who were part of his creation these were a class of angels that this class of angels came and saw the daughters of men do you know who these angels were these angels were not just the exalted angels because i hope you know that by the time the angels that fought with lucifer fell from heaven the ones that came down with him adam was not there adam's story and genesis one was not there they had fallen in a particular dispensation are you getting what i'm saying now mm. so by the time god is creating adam or recreating the earth and making adam there are already inhabitants in the earth satan alongside the myriads of fallen angels are you getting what i'm saying now mm. and because spirits don't die in the context of cessation of life i will tell you what the death of a spirit is i i, I told you i was going to tell you but spirits don't die in the context of ceasing from breathing and ceasing from movement the moment adam came to start another race these spirits were looking for a way to find expression are we together now it's a very serious thing and the bible says that while they were voyaging around the earth all of a sudden they saw the daughters of men that they were fair to look upon it's a scriptural way of saying they were very beautiful are we together that means those angels had feelings hello it's not all the classes of angels that you know theologically there are all kinds of arguments whether angels have the, uh, the ability to reproduce or not and we, we see it here that the angels saw the daughter of men the daughters of men and they took them wives that means they could marry they came down and saw beautiful ladies like you looking at me now and the angels chose they advised themselves he said look let's marry these women verse 3 and the lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man for seeing that his flesh is there shall be 120 verse 4 there were what now watch this the bible just tells us that a come darling an angel are we together now a fallen angel benign elohim all of a sudden sees human people pure humans and the bible says took them to wives and all of a sudden we now see the manifestation of a species that the bible calls them what i'm trying to trace the origin of demons for you 
that giants until this time there were no demons on earth they were fallen angels there were other dark spirits that had been in other civilizations but not demons these giants were in the earth the bible says that when the sons of god came into the daughters of men you know what that means and they bear what children that means that the seed those fallen angels had seed within them and that their seeds got these women pregnant and they gave birth to these giants who were mighty men of old men of renown are you following my story now so we trace that these women were minding their business all of a sudden these beings come that there is a possibility ah goodness so spirits can get physical women pregnant so we see that there's no argument there are we together this information is useful we need it because that's how jesus came into the world are we together now listen carefully jesus came into the world how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man joseph has not finished paying my dowry don't embarrass me and he said no a spirit is coming from heaven i will show you this is the mystery ah goodness i'm already excited let me just take it easy so these spirits came and all of a sudden when the women gave birth to children the children started growing unusually they had features that were superhuman it was clear that these spirits were not pure humans the seed of lucifer in those children started cursing them the bible says god saw that the wickedness of man this spirit started introducing attributes upon the earth men were not that wicked all of a sudden there was a fabrication of different levels of wickedness and then the people in the earth ah, who are these beings that can be so wicked that means a normal man has a maximum level to which his heart can conceive evil if evil goes beyond that level something else is responsible for that level of heartlessness follow me because as i taught you this seed is still on earth today are we together the bible says that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually this was not the case now man had become so depraved the bible says and it repented the lord that he had made the man in the earth and it grieved his heart now watch this thank you darling did you know the lord said i will destroy man whom i have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repented me that i have made them just stop there god is regretting these spirits have found their way back into this adamic civilization they were there casted now with the ability to reproduce they found a way of creating continuity for themselves because remember the law of territory if you don't have a body these angels these spirits because they are not demons it is demons that don't have bodies angels have bodies that's why they could come to even meet angels can translate themselves into physical bodies is that true remember the angels that came to abraham they didn't come as ghosts flying they were human beings this was what caused the flood of noah are you getting what i'm saying now the flood of noah was a system of judgment that god needed to annihilate that entire race the question is the giants let me use you again the giant children that were born by these angels and this when the flood happened because spirits don't die in terms of cessation of living the bodies now died and the spirits are you getting the point now the spirits of all those rays the name of those giants as you know theologically speaking is called the nephilims are we together now this disembodied spirits because every time a spirit is not in a body what happens it becomes restless these spirits they can't go to heaven they can't go to hell and they float within the circumference of earth and the second heavens and that is the reason why these spirits today 
are those we call demons listen carefully the demon spirits that you call are the spirits of these nephilims the sons before demons came there was already darkness listen carefully before demons came they were already fallen angels the fallen angels and the daughters of men produce what we call demons disembodied spirits now watch this look up i want to prove a few things for you i, I hope that you are getting what are you get are we are we still together let me just know that we're together do you know that fallen angels cannot possess men there is no record in scripture from genesis to revelation where a spirit was inside a man are we together now and then they ask who are you and he says um i'm angel so 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 and so no no it may look like it is the spirit but those i will tell you what their office is because those fallen angels are still working today but they are not the ones inside men are we together those disembodied spirits are the ones who move and i hope you know that the disembodied spirits that fell are by far more than the number of human beings on earth that's why ten thousand of them will not mind finding accommodation in one man there is a desperate need for accommodation among those demon spirits till today look at look at how they cry when you want to cast them out that means they don't <laughs> listen are you seeing the extreme violence now please don't feel bad many of you have been delivered many of you will be delivered this night but listen notice that you will see a kind quiet person brother or sister and all of a sudden when those spirits are provoked by the power of god it will take five people to suddenly hold one person you see the way people are rolling on the floor there is no power you try rolling like that by yourself and see what happens another entity this disembodied spirit to the point that when jesus was about to cast them they begged him they said jesus you know our condition you are not in ignorance as to what is happening to us where do you because they know it's hard to find a body that can allow you to be comfortable that's why when they find it they go straight to the realm of your mind and create a system that makes sure even if they evict them they can still come back please understand what i'm teaching you and you will be free you will experience victory and you will possess your possession demon spirits they are everywhere today as i'm talking now there are demon spirits around hoping and waiting where will i get accommodation now are we together now where will i get accommodation now this is what it means for spirits to die when they say demon spirit should die is the restlessness that is created by exiting it from a mortal body it is an intense state of torture no spirit no spirit is like putting you inside water and dropping you there that's exactly what you do when that's why they cry and they beg they make sure they don't leave they negotiate all kinds of things jesus have you come to cast us shall we have a time now jesus said go say let's look at they drowned the swine they were so desperate for bodies they entered pigs for a few minutes just so that they can find a place to rest the pigs were entering water they said yes let's just be rested before you enter the water you see why satan hates deliverance you may not know what it is that is the reason why when you cast out devils you are in trouble because satan will mobilize any kind of attack on your life at on anything he knows what is happening is God helping us are we understanding something so this spirit but there are other kinds of spirit I hope you know that the fallen angels that fell with Lucifer are not the only angels that have fallen <laughs> there are many group of offenses there are others who fell so bad they are in chains now they are not even allowed to be featured in that's the level of wickedness those guys are more wicked than satan himself what they did to god we'll find out when we get to heaven that god and they they were cast down not to the earth satan was cast down and left in the earth 
but these spirits were taken straight to the bottomless pit and were bound there with chains because for the sake of the elect they were not left on earth what would they have done that means even satan would have been afraid of them I'm demystifying this thing to you whether it comes as occultism whether it comes as Ogoni there is a central system of operation is when it comes to execution that all those variations come the foundation of all of this is this spirit finding a resting place and when this <sighs> these angels watch their children called demons move around with no bodies in intense torture and so they say let's work together we will coordinate you while you enter the people will tell you what to do and so paul said wow so there are principalities there are powers there are rulers then there are others who don't operate in the earth realm they are spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places they all coordinate themselves one one demon spoke on behalf of 10,000 of them it was when Jesus asked him who are you he now said we are many oh forget that you are hearing only my voice there is a an intelligent organogram brothers and sisters if one human body can host 10,000 demons then it's important for you to listen one demon one body can be so powerful if one body can host God why can't it host demons that a man's body can be the temple of the living God let me just compose myself and get somewhere because if you don't understand this what are you delivering you see where we miss it we just come and tell somebody there's a spirit oh yeah we bend his head and just turn him around Oh yeah, you must come out. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I'll hug you after I'm done with my example. And you turn his head round, and the guy just says, "Man, let me just quietly fall for this guy to leave me in peace." And he just falls down, and you you tell him to say thank you, Jesus. He repeats after you. You get up and you are happy, and the demon spirit say, "Wow, what ignorance! Advantage, advantage." Demon spirits can dwell in your spirit demon spirits can dwell in your mind demon spirits can dwell in your body when you tell somebody you cast a demon it just comes out you don't know where it came out from it will re you the same way it comes out from your spirit your soul and your body physically it will look the same it takes discernment to know what happened and the authority of scripture that guides you if that person you are delivering is a believer then you know certainly it must not be from his spirit because he that is joined to christ is one spirit are we together but that does not mean this is where many of us have been surprised because for many years you believe that no these demons cannot find expression you came for koinonia to your surprise praise and worship was going on and all of a sudden you are feeling as if somebody is drawing your clothes you are saying what is happening the next thing you are sweeping the ground you are waking up after 10 minutes what is wrong and you are a pastor and you are, you are, you are a, 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 a prayer leader and your members were watching and say oh god prayer leader what i hope that this impact we received impartation a night before this deliverance so what really entered us no you don't stigmatize people a spiritual childishness to think just because a demon was casted out that no 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 you don't do that the fact that you are being delivered is a sign that you are in mount zion it's not something that should make you ashamed the, the, that means you have gotten to a place where the light and the power of god is forcing those spirits to be uncomfortable it's a thing of joy You have to understand these demon spirits because they are everywhere there are many ways they can enter that's why they are desperate you can know that these spirits are let me tell you this those spirits have on you their characteristics you know that they are in or around your life because whatever they produce in your life is abnormal are we together 
a demon spirit can find expression and you can start having abnormal passion for food you can eat the food of 10 people it's called gluttony it's not a medical condition the spirit is eating through you even you you know that by myself i cannot eat this kind of food listen listen this spirit now enters you and begins to manifest an unusual passion then you marry one wife the spirit is not satisfied with one woman you now say oh let me just be careful this is my one and only wife the spirit says no way and all of a sudden you add 12 more and the spirit he says more you add 12 more and the spirit says you are delaying me let's let's switch to to the point that the spirit can be patient if he doesn't find women it will make a man like a man it's not normal these are the spirits behind it listen very carefully that's what happened in the days of noah these spirits you see are not weak they are not foolish they are not stupid the moment they find a body they start manifesting their characteristic the same way when the holy spirit finds a body all of a sudden an anointing you shouldn't have i shouldn't know your name where did it come it's obvious that it's not me something has taken charge of my faculties and is revealing to me something that i should not know ordinary me if i stand close to you maybe if we fight you will even beat me but all of a sudden i will lift my hand and this guy is on the floor now is that me no the same way i'm supposed to give you peace ordinarily but because of the demon spirit in me when i come near you your life must scatter it's not me hear me married people this is a mistake people are coming with forces and influences they don't even know and you find uh, this is the mistake that prophets make again listen carefully especially if you're in the prophetic here because they now look and say oh your wife is a witch she's not a witch for some reason she's she's hosting a habitation of certain spirit beings that are creating an effect even her she will tell you i don't know why everybody i come near if it's their business it dies if it's everything it dies are you seeing why some of you the moment somebody comes to say i love you i want to go and see your parents the spirit in him will say am i not already there so what do you want to do now tragedies listen very carefully those spirits feed on things and they put in you desires that will continue to feed them while they remain that's why you can sit down and they will wake you in the night to carry your laptop and type something you should not watch and you are watching you hate what you are watching but the spirit is feeding on it it is the atmosphere that will keep it there your majesty your majesty that come to you in the dream world they carry the face of a man they carry the face of a woman they carry the face of an object a loved one it doesn't matter they are doing something to you all of a sudden you want to give someone a job and you say by tomorrow please come and collect the job you go to bed notice all of a sudden they have come the dream will carry different you may see yourself in primary school second it doesn't matter what form it comes they are still the ones listen to me all of a sudden they may come and molest you they may come and do whatever they want to do and you stand up in the morning to you you don't know what happened you dress very smart sir i've come to collect my employment letter and the man will say if i see you here you had the testimony of our mommy here how can you tell somebody else? this is what has made many of your helpers to leave you they will promise you send me your account and all of a sudden you go to bed and those spirits are here we don't know the bible said lest satan should take an advantage of you for we are not ignorant ignorant 
this is the number one cause number one cause number one cause of barrenness number one cause of impotency the jealousy of those spirits the very jealousy of those spirits with all honor to our doctors i love doctors but i'm telling you this is it can i surprise you i want to tell you something that many of you may not believe i hope and pray that you may believe it i that's why you see i struggle with tonight's teaching it is possible for a woman to carry a seed that is for both her husband and these spirits i wish i'm not the one teaching this sometimes this 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 work is very hard sometimes it's true go back to our villages and hear what our great grandparents with divination used to say sometimes they will see a child and stand and say no let me look at this child and look at this child and look at this child and say no something is wrong and this child is born with unusual trouble and unusual abilities usually doesn't last for too long and just dies and goes but within that 12 to 15 years the trouble that that child causes for the family what can this one is not a deliverance issue this is another seed that is not human can i tell you this don't feel bad we are praying don't feel bad this is how fibroid is formed what you call fibroid is the aberration of the intercourse between these spirits are we together now an attempt for these spirits that's why it grows in the same place where a baby should grow as a baby is growing is growing too and notice that 90 percent of the time it will kill the baby yet you say it's not alive from the womb already ask jacob and esau that from the womb the children were already there they were already fighting ask jesus and john you call them they are just fetuses whereas there was communication going on when mary met with um elizabeth the babies too met with themselves how are you how are you well now we're coming oh i will come before you make sure you do it nice they were interacting please sit down when you know these things you will appreciate the power of god and the victory of christ i know this may look like a messy teaching tonight but just allow me tidy this up and then you will walk back and now find out that nothing just happens nothing watch this these demon spirits till today until jesus comes they are searching for bodies to find expression they are in our fathers that's why our fathers behave unusually they are in our mothers that's why they behave unusually wife that's the mystery behind the stubbornness and your wise decisions of your husband he may be well-meaning notice that most of those people a time can come they are calm and understanding and peaceful and cooperative and then suddenly something comes when you are bringing someone out of a prison cell there's a sign here that you will never steal anybody's thing you will sign and say i won't do anything say oh yeah be born again i'm I, I, I will be a serious person i will even be serious for the first two days he will go to the farm doing well until that spirit now knows there is a stronghold are we together i will teach you this on deliverance there is already a doorway that allows it so the spirit goes on vacation as that brother is in the farm he will make another person annoy him because all these attributes of the flesh are doors with a simple anger it returns it has entered the guy doesn't know all of a sudden the guy gets up and says you hit me and beats him and kills him he's back to the prison he's wondering what am i doing on my way back to the prison the spirit has come back to his house because when a spirit leaves a man it doesn't wave at you it allows for some time the frustration of a lack of habitation will make it come back and say that womb i left let me go back and find out what is there oh there is a child there now that home i went there is joy now i need a space for myself and the moment they find expression they will have to start executing their own attributes 
have you not been surprised look at those who steal if they are under the influence of that demon hide anything anywhere the person will stand is like word of knowledge he will just look around and say Can't lift that carpet you will carry the money there he doesn't know it's true i'm telling you this you know i'm not lying you hide the money anywhere one day you hide it inside the ceiling he will just stand and stand and look up the spirit is saying look up that's where it is I know I know a true story a true story of a couple I counseled some years ago they were about to get married all of a sudden from nowhere very wonderful lady who loves the Lord the lady brought a report crying that they said she was positive with HIV ah, she even me I was surprised because a lady that I know very well behaved lady I said what happened where did that one come from and all of a sudden when I was looking in the realm of the spirit God just opened my eyes and I, as soon as I touched that spirit something strange happened now I'm, I'm not saying you should go out and create trouble but something strange happened the spirit started manifesting and speaking around and he said at the point of the test it entered the doctor doctors you are my friends I'm just being thank God you are born again we just finished an outreach there are many things that if we do not know there are many people carrying reports that are not true there are many people carrying things that are not true it is this same spirit that appear what is HIV HIV is called AIDS Abi acquired is acquired meaning it's not within you it came from somewhere acquired immunodeficiency syndrome I'm, I, I hope I'm right where do you think it came from where do you think cancer came from when you understand this you will know why all of a sudden Jacob did something do you know I will be showing you Jacob slept and had a dream and Jacob saw where the males that pregnanted the female goats came from he was in a dream he looked above and saw that all the males in the realm of the spirit were spotted Hi. <laughs> it was not Laban's males no they came from somewhere that's why it didn't matter what Laban said the results were manipulated from the realm of the spirit when you are assisted from the realm of the spirit it doesn't matter what the disadvantages are there is a system to change everything this is not my discussion this night but I don't don't tempt me to have to go and show you please that this spirit interactions must be there for Satan and demons to find expression no man just enters trouble like that and no man just comes out like that there must be that spirit interaction let me show you something you're tempting me for us to Genesis 30 let's look at it Genesis 30 25 we'll look at 25 to 43 Jesus thank you pray in the spirit please while we are opening this hallelujah look at this look at this let me talk about Jacob and Laban now I'm establishing a point here and it came to pass when Rachel was born Joseph that Jacob said to Laban send me away that I may go to my place and my country we're reading it's a long reading let's see how fast we can go just keep just keep projecting and let's go he said give me my wives and all of that and all of that go to 28 Jacob is discussing with Laban now and he said appoint me thy wages and I will give thee 29 we're reading down to 40 there about and he said thou knowest that I have served thee and how thy cattle was with me 30 for it was little which thou hast before I came and it is now increased to a multitude and the Lord had blessed thee who blessed thee talk to me who blessed thee the Lord has we'll see how that Lord did the blessing the Lord had blessed thee since my coming and now well shall I provide for my own house 31 and he said what shall I give thee Jacob he said don't give me anything if thou will do with this one thing I will again keep thy flock what is the one thing 32 I will pass through the flock today 
removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle and all the brown cattle among the sheep and the spotted and speckled among the goats and of such they shall be my hire so he's saying i will go round your ranch all the cows and the sheep that are spotted i will pick them at this point they were not many i hope you know that and then he says so shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come when it shall come for my hire you know this and that and that everyone that is not speckled or spotted he was saying that if you find it with me then take me as a thief are you getting the idea now the bible says so laban said behold i would that it might you know might be done according to your word 35 and he removed that day all the goats that were ring straight and spotted and so on and so forth and so forth go to verse 40 go to verse 40 jacob went on a journey there's uh, there's no time to prove it but you will see that jacob simply went on a journey for three days jacob returned back after three days and suddenly saw spotted calves he said no something is going on here the goats and cows and sheep were not pregnant the normal time that goats there because the males that got them pregnant were not part of the fold they came from somewhere the same way the bible never says jesus was pregnant for nine months no it's not on record that jesus was pregnant for nine months jacob did separate the lamb and set the faces of the flocks towards the ring stake and all you know all of this and he put his own flocks and put them you know this and that 41 and it came to pass whensoever the stronger cattle did conceive that jacob laid the rods before his eyes the eyes of the cattle in the gutters that they might conceive among the rods when we read to 43 we stop there but when the cattle were feeble he puts them not in so the feebler were labans and the stronger jacobs last verse 43 then we'll go to verse 41 and the man increased exceedingly and had much cattle and made servants and men servants and camels and asses now go to chapter 31 let me search it here 31 from verse 10 to 13 genesis 31 read with me one to read and it came to pass at the time that the cattle had come i just jumped from verse one to nine verse one to nine was the frustration of of laban's sons they started saying so now jacob has taken everything what inheritance do we have and the bible is showing us how god assisted jacob to produce that result are you ready and it came to pass that at the time that the cattle conceived that i lifted up my eyes and saw where in a dream so jacob was dreaming and the dream now revealed what was happening that was not there physically what did he see in a dream i behold the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring staked speckled and i beheld i saw in my dream that there were some cattle that were making these ones to be pregnant that were not part of the are, are you with me now he's not awake oh he's seen in a dream 11 hmm. and the angel of the lord so the angel was there we know that there are angels and other cattle came from another realm Shabakatos kabalakata he spoke to me in a dream and he said jacob and i said here i am verse 12 mm. and he said lift now thy eyes and see all the rams an angel is showing him another ram somewhere that is not part of laban's flock all they needed was laban's females the males came from another realm the same way all the fallen angels needed was the females of men the males were the angels with their seed All the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring staked, speckled, and grizzled. For I have seen, I had to introduce some other animals to come and give you speed of result because I have seen the wickedness of Laban. So I came to assist you with extraordinary result that is not of this realm. 13. I am the God of Bethel. This is why I'm doing it where you anointed with a pillar and where you vowed a vow unto me he said arise get thee out of this land 
and out of thy kindred jacob woke up and all of a sudden the males were not seen physically but when the females gave birth they were all speckled and laban said how did this thing happen but god said jacob let me show you so when you see a woman frying akara and building a house with that akara there is an assistance it, it cannot just be about ten thousand no the realm of the spirit came to assist men this is a testimony of this ministry this is a testimony of my life we are not alone he sent his angel there is the angel of his presence and if you don't believe what i just taught you the devil will destroy you and you will never now when you see unusual results you don't question it because i have shown you that heaven can assist men he said remember the bethel i am the god of bethel so was that angel an angel no i am the god i came to supervise your speed i have seen how laban mocked you and is it not me that said i will restore so let me do it now i will bring my own male cattle from everywhere are you seeing why the bible said the cattle on a thousand key where is it it's not a location on earth the cattle god has it the next time somebody gets a miracle alert and you are asking where did the money come from does that sound wise no lest satan should take advantage of us for we are not ignorant i have taught you now that the realm of the spirit can assist men the same way when you see so that you stop this counseling that doesn't make sense you see an unusual thief an unusual troublemaker a man who marries 11 wives and is not tired that man does not need counsel what's the name of that group that used to discipline men that social group social welfare even if you like report him to efcc there is a spirit a normal man should be satisfied with his wife alone the moment a spirit comes no unusual characteristics unusual attributes unusual wickedness when a man carries a knife and takes one of our little ones here and is slaughtering a baby like this my brother my sister that's not a normal human being a spirit is using his hands to hold a knife remember that when these spirits show up they are so wicked jesus said one of the signs he says before the coming of god it shall be like the days of noah that means there will be a repeat of this again these spirits in an unusual way will multiply wickedness but the hope is that the power of god too and the assistance from heaven will also be multiplied upon the saints that means that the revivals that are coming you will see dimensions of the spirit at work in a man that you have never seen in church history spirit so accidents don't just happen no you are just driving and then the car just veers off my brother the car did not just veer off a spirit attempting in frustration to either kill you don't feel bad don't feel bad whether that happened to your loved ones so that's why god is teaching us a pastor can have a ministry and when the ministry wants to rise because he's ignorant of this that spirit can enter him and all of a sudden you will find out that is five months of intense hatred from members they will hate you for no cause and the ministry dies less satan should take an advantage of me demons can enter people demons can enter homes they can enter churches when they enter they execute the will of satan you can be born again they will not touch your spirit but i guarantee you they will come to your mind and build a fortification around your mind and still feel safe as though they were in your spirit so that your being born again makes no difference as far as you are concerned this is the mystery behind these things so you see them in your sleep when you wake when you sleep and you wake up and read like i shared with you ah we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness and you don't know who to tell you are sad 
good things want to happen these wicked spirits come in let me tell you progress and breakthrough is not very difficult it's the spirits that make it so hard you are near your breakthrough like this do you know these spirits can relocate your destiny helper just so that you will suffer while men slept the enemy came with his seed and planted it don't feel embarrassed that when you look at your life you see the outworkings of these seeds because i don't know if we have that time now if we don't have it we'll do part four at after the miracle service no problem i don't just want to rush this you have to appreciate this for me to teach you the dimensions of deliverance because casting out a spirit is only one of the dimensions of deliverance if you stop there you didn't do well because the spirit will return are we together if i push this door open and i leave that door open am i still safe please talk to me that spirit for sure will come back their determination to return to you was not left as a secret in the bible the bible is very clear about the fact that if a demon leaves you it will try to come back that's why you find out that people can be free for 10 years from poverty and then 17 years the spirit now comes he says, it's been a while let me come back a man can be married loves his wife after she gives him three or four children and then all of a sudden what he was doing when he was 20 21 comes back when he's 41 that's why you find out that a man loves god and is working passionately and then before you know it when he's age 55 he will go back into a gay lifestyle or do something and you are wondering at 55 the american nation ignored this satan proposed a doctrine to the west that exited the issue he, he just created a safe zone for himself in our teachings notice that satan didn't remove everything he just found the hardest part of it and created a theology that keeps him safe and look at the result today listen hold on guys let me tell you this listen to me I have been a victim of these things that I'm telling you. If you don't conquer this thing, you will never last. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That's the reason why it looks like no matter, no matter how you do well, oh, um, there's no cause in my life. I am free. I don't have any, no devil. Don't talk about any cause to me. The spirit will just keep quiet and be watching you. And all of a sudden, the same way it took your father and rubbished his life, took your mother and rubbished her life, you will suddenly find out that you got married. You find out that you got married. Watch this. And all of a sudden, you will become a replica of your father. A replica. Remember, it started with your father slapping your mother. He said sorry once. Then he did it again. The third time he said, I won't say sorry again. I will give you a dirty slap. I paid your dowry. Now, because you thought you were a pastor, it will leave you just like that. And then you keep managing it for a while. And then after nine years, the demons will make sure it bites you where it is hard. And you turn and give her a slap and find yourself. And two of you will sit down and counsel yourself. Say it will never happen. And before you know it, you would have done it many times. I'm not telling you this to show you how powerful Satan is. I'm only giving you a sense of appreciation because deliverance is possible and complete deliverance is possible. If complete deliverance does not happen to you, you will never possess your possession. Believe me. Believe me. This is the Bible. Obadiah 1.17. Please give it to us. The sons of Jacob will possess. It is their possession. But there is a mystery. Are you seeing why many of our parents just said don't worry i will get the job for 25 years they didn't get any other job 25 years no other job no lifting what of the families where women are the ones who feed the men if you are a man and you ever try to rise up 
those horns will squash you down when mommy called me sorry to just make reference to her i saw her text the fact that i don't reply your text doesn't mean i don't look at it when i saw her text i knew immediately what was wrong i knew that they were controlling powers that have followed the life of this dear young man i prayed for him here before he left and i knew that if god does not help this man you will be surprised that one day are you seeing why people go abroad for 10 years and return back like thieves you don't hear from them from a long time you think they built houses they are coming to give you money they return back in shame they start moving from country to country through deserts to arrive in lagos when the young man sent me a text i looked at it somebody gave you a job and people don't just change their mind when things just change suddenly just know that a spirit just came in the same way if it can change for the positive i hate you but i just change you know that ah this is the holy spirit the holy ghost has stepped in the man and i called him how are you my friend he said fine i said let's pray i said when i pray for you you are going to get the job father in the name of jesus it's not what i'm saying jesus said go it is what you are standing on it is not just the articulateness of your words it is the office and the revelation that backs you so you can say one word go and the demons don't hear go the demons see all the mysteries that support what you are saying this is what produces result many people think it is in the articulateness of the english i now standing by my left adjure you that you move no, that is grammar my brother demons don't hear grammar the revelation when jesus said go go is not enough to take demons away it was the rock that he was standing on two houses were built it is the rock you are standing on he said this is how i will build my church you will not just speak it is what you are speaking on that supports your results when i prayed for that gentleman i just dropped the phone i knew what would happen because all i did you would think it is me that produced the result i know what to tell the holy spirit i know the factor that must be introduced in that equation i knew that except the angel of the lord comes to rescue and because they are always ascending and descending they confirm the words of his messengers all i did was to create space for the holy spirit let there be space for you in this equation and all of a sudden he steps in and i don't know how many hours i don't think it was up to three hours you see mommy dancing here she's not just dancing for nothing that's why you hear somebody say i just came for koinonia and things the things didn't just change god will examine your equations and see how you threw him out and just say okay let me be introduced here and all of a sudden things change things change i will stop here so that we'll pray after miracle service i will teach you now on casting out devils and i'll teach you deliverance through transformation and the discipline of conformity all of this will come in let's do part four let's not rush this thing i want us to take some time hold on before you stand up to take some time to pray it is not a secret that these demons are around they use all kinds of ways to enter your life and the flesh is their greatest access you are alone in the room and you are hearing sounds bam ceiling window looks like it's opening they are looking for an access point how can i make this person fear and doubt the faithfulness of god so that i can find expression in his life you are just hearing like wind is blowing all of a sudden you imagine somebody has to be near me and then anger have you noticed that every time good things are coming a good relationship a brother just comes just at the point he's about to propose that week something dangerous happens you are at your angriest point and the brother says no i can't marry you then you return back these are the spirits playing on the minds of the saints messing up our breakthroughs the day you are supposed to go for a job interview you are running then your car breaks down your car didn't have any business breaking down but it broke down 
as soon as you arrive there they say sorry the gate is closed so you stand there and say life not life spirits spirits my brother spirits they are about to pay your father his gratuity the demons will hook the money until the day they diagnose him of having cancer that will spend 150,000 for chemotherapy and the rest then the money suddenly comes and because you have to use it to spend it and spend it and spend it and spend it how about students that enter the exam hall they thought they went alone you conduct tutorials for others and enter the exam hall as soon as you sit down you look at the paper but i solved this question yesterday night what happened these demons hijack your understanding when you are out of the exams you go back and see the paper in your house that you solved it with sometimes you're on your way to the exam to write your final year exam and you forget one question paper in your pocket you didn't forget you were assisted to leave it there all of a sudden an invigilator comes and says, what is that stand up and said no that's it you are going listen to what i'm telling you because god delivered me myself it will be impossible to be doing ministry at this level just talking and saying this i am a product of the deliverance that happens upon mount zion there are people there is no good thing you give them that blesses them give them money it will be the reason for their trouble help them give them favor they will cause trouble our loved ones may be like that for many years the church has been deceived and misled into thinking everything is just normal into thinking oh everything is fine i am okay just because we have some little money we allow the devil fool us into believing that we are all right the devil can allow you to continue being a preacher keep winning uh, the the loss keep healing the sick while he hijacks your mind and continues to do what he's doing at age 12 you see your son already reproducing you and you are saying my god what is this brothers and sisters i tell you the truth by the authority of the word of god i know that i'll be criticized by many people for these teachings but let me tell you this I was called into the office of an apostle listen i share with you a mystery that will help you to possess your inheritance i will not lie to you and sit you down and allow the devil tear your life into pieces let this deliverance be perfected in you you will you will be shocked at the things that will happen you're already hearing testimonies job will become child's play everything will become child's play barrenness stories there are many of us who would have been in ministry by now the call of god is upon you you know the call of god is upon you but these spirits won't let you rest they are all around you they will make sure that every helper god brings to your life you do something to them that drives them against you that's why some of us don't have friends it's not like you are bad the moment a friend comes to your life wonderful person oh I, I i love you i want to help you the spirits will make something happen you will betray the person you will lie against the person you will do something stupid that will kill your opportunity and all of a sudden they will leave you but tonight brothers and sisters the devil is a liar i don't know if there's someone here who is tired who is saying enough is enough i can't let this happen if you are free your loved ones are not free so in any case there is something for you to do
yet taught you next the next time we meet when we now start talking of deliverance we are going to look at the deliverance ministry of jesus just jesus leave paul leave this just jesus and we are going to see what jesus did with this spirit and you will see that jesus said this kind go it not there is a kind you don't just generically tell demons go no there are different spirits the way you drive a fallen angel from influencing a life is not the same way you cast out a demon now the fallen angels may be illegal occupants but the demons are legal occupants they came by birth the women gave their wombs freely so they are not just run no they have a right This kind goeth not. This kind goeth not. This kind goeth not. Listen, I shared with you during the prayer and fasting. Remember that there is a physical, atmospheric temperature that drives demons by itself. Not um, there is a there is a physical. There are places on earth that demons cannot stay. There's no preacher there. The environment itself drives them. It's in your, it's in your, it's in your Bible. That when a demon leaves a man, it goes through where dry regions, dry regions, hoping it will find something dry that it and, and not finding any. It's uncomfortable and it comes back. Who casted it from that place? Nobody preached with it. It left that place and preferred to come and fight you than to remain in the wilderness. Listen, witchcraft was a proposition that these spirits brought to men. Men are not so smart to know that you, you should kill somebody. There are wicked people from where we come from that will exchange the life even of their children for themselves. Have you seen old people who don't die? Every time they are sick, you hear that someone is dead and then they, they are alive. All of a sudden, they become fine. No, sir. Read in the Bible, a king who slew his son to keep his own life. Ah, uh -uh. nobody will bring a knife to my neck to keep it. Ah, we are going to pray. It's just going to be praying in tongues now. I want you to find a corner, my brother, my sister. Take your life serious. In the next five minutes, instrumentalists just charge the atmosphere for us. Blast in tongues and refuse upon Mount Zion. And it shall come to pass in that day. And it shall come to pass in that day. In that day. In that day. That the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder. And the yoke from off your neck. And it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Please pray, pray. If you are tired, hold the hands of somebody that can agree with you. Pray for your destiny. Pray. Enough is enough, oh God. The victory of Christ, the work of Jesus on the cross, cannot be in vain. The substitutionary sacrifice of the Son of the Living God cannot be in vain. Shaka to kata bala kata, empre pekato shoto pes, shepre ketos, shepre ketos, shepre ketos, eke teke 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 te, shapra kata 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 kata, shaka kata kata kata, ete teke 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 te, shapra kata to kata bala katos. In the break it to shake it take it take Lick it to shabaraka tosh Pray 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 Salama katama lalamash In prataka to shabaratos In prakatos That burden shall be taken From off my shoulder That yoke from off my neck Enough is enough In the name of Jesus Shabatakata Shabatakata Sabatos kaparota shenevetas, embrekete 
Sete, Zepo Soto Paruka, Ebra Kato Shabara Kapaya Davadavas, Sato Sole Ketemene Kapa. Pray, Koinonia. Pray for your family. Pray for your wife. Pray for your husband. Pray for your children. Arise, oh God. This is battle. This is battle. This is battle. Arise, oh God of battle. Pray. Pray. Sabato, Sabata. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. It's time to break grounds in the spirit. It's time for the anointing of your destiny to come. It's time for the ministry to open. It's time for your finances to come. It's time for prophecy to find expression. Hello. Thy will be done. Elohim, Adonai, Thy kingdom come. Thy will. Elohim, Adonai. Elohim, Adonai. Elohim, Adonai. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. This prayer is a serious prayer. As we pray, sisters, I want you to lay your hands on your womb. As we are praying, brothers, just pray in tongues. I'd like you to declare that no seed of any entity that is not of God will find I will not give birth to any stranger. No, Lekatos Katabarata, Shanakatos Kata. Pray. No matter the ordinances of the fathers, no matter the enchantments of the ancient, I come by a new order and I declare my womb will produce that seed of the woman that will bruise the head of the serpent. I cause five broy. I cause five broy. Cause every devil. Shabatata. Shakatakatakata. Lekatakate. Man brakos koto perekete. E shekadegadegadegadegade. Rapakato perekete liata. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Brothers, I'd like you to pray. The spirit that keeps men in one place. You don't move forward. You don't move backward. You stay. No productivity. Every gentleman here, open your mouth and blast in tongues. Father in the heavens, this is better. Shabbat Katoskata. The yokes, the altars, and everything that tie my life, that tie my destiny, by the mystery of deliverance, I challenge. I challenge. It is upon Mount Zion. The spirits that cause failure. Shakatoka pitch, Hallelujah. Listen. Demons came into being when the spirit 
assisted men so your victory comes into being when the spirit assists you it says i am the god of Bethel. i have seen the oppression that laban has done the victory will not just happen forget about the physical things in the realm of the spirit you are going to cry for divine assistance i provoke the ministry of angels over every affair of my life lift your voice and pray cry are they not ministering spirits are they not ministering spirits my brothers and sisters are they not ministering spirits send to minister for them that be the heirs of salvation i call for assistance from heaven oh god of jeshurun the helper of men the lifter of men the helper of men the lifter of men the deliverer angels on assignment angels on assignment angels on assignment angels on assignment judging the wicked delivering the prophecy of God concerning my life Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Every attribute of the flesh that gives access to any spirit in my life by the mystery of the blood, I declare that that door is closed forever. Lift your voice and pray. Come on. Lift your voice and pray. still pray I tell you I feel fire in this place listen everything God has shown you either as a revelation from his word or as a revelation from the realm of the spirit you are going to declare Jacob did not just see the spotted calves and left them in the realm of the spirit they had to come and interact the word must become flesh I like you to lift your voice and cry Jacob's katabata every anointing every mantle every mandate every dimension the prophetic the apostolic prosperity increase speed deliverance that God has shown me Lord you showed me victory I declare I declare I declare it must find expression
Now, this prayer we are going to pray, listen carefully. Whether you are an usher or not, please, if anyone is under the anointing or manifesting around you, just help them. Are we together? It's a very serious prayer we are going to pray now. You are going to pray that if by any means there is any spirit entity in my life or around me, it's time for you to come out. It's time for you to go. Listen. As you pray this prayer, many strange things will start happening to you. Don't worry about it. You just focus on this prayer and pray with all your heart and watch what happens. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ that any spirit entity finding expression in my mind in my body around my life hear the word of the Lord I cast you out of my life now lift your voice and pray pray fire is falling pray fire is falling Shabakatata. I cast every spirit I cast every devil I cast every spirit by the power of the Holy Ghost my mind my body around my life around Koinonia in the name of Jesus around my family Shamakatos Kadabash If you are married also pray for your family pray for your children I cast every devil Matakota Shamalata Shabras Katavareketo Shayalamakata The Lord is healing fibroid. Now, the Lord is ministering to me. A mighty deliverance is going to happen now. It's starting with ladies. Any spirit entity that comes in the form of a man and attempts to oppress you in the night, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, let the fire from heaven 
fall right now and command i command that spirit to go help them right now any spirit entity using the face of anyone to molest you and close doors inside outside i command deliverance now i command deliverance now let the daughters of jacob possess their possession in the name of jesus christ hallelujah i'm hearing in my spirit uncontrolled anger it's a spirit it's living people right now uncontrolled anger is it's an unusual anger rage it comes you can tear anything and you can do anything i'm seeing fire in the name of jesus anyone who is a victim of this operation right now in the name of jesus i bring you deliverance i bring you deliverance by the power of the holy ghost uncontrolled anger i come against it now Please help her. I'm seeing a vision, and the Lord is asking me to pray on that case. In this vision, I'm seeing someone dream that's what i'm seeing now and in that dream you keep seeing yourself going back either to your old house or to a primary school or writing an exam you are finished it's a strong spirit of delay i stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace help your wife right now in the name of jesus at the count of three the spirit of delay hear the word of the lord let god's people go now one two three i command that spirit go now go now please help them go now this one thing i do forgetting the things that are behind no devil should take you back again I command that spirit go now I cast that spirit now Ya bone na ka so jana de na ka sar ke sara If there is anyone you know whether you are here or anyone you know that for some reason has not been able to take in in the name of barrenness whether you are here or you are standing for them i want you to agree i want to pray let's see the devil that will stop them from taking in in the name of jesus anyone you know and you are standing for that the devil i don't care what the medical report is that the devil has come to make sure that they will not celebrate children in the name that is above all names we release children from heaven in the name of jesus we release children from heaven we open every barren womb in the name of jesus christ hallelujah the lord is showing me a group of people you see you have dreams frequently and in the dreams you see yourself receiving things and it's something that in the physical you are hoping to receive but the moment you see it in that dream it will never happen again it's an irony it's like the opposite of what you see in dreams is what happens the lord is asking me to deliver those people now please help her help her just stand near your wife so that she doesn't have to fall right now in the name of jesus in the name that is above all names i decree and declare from the realm of the spirit let there be deliverance for you now let there be deliverance for you now
just two more points and we're done look at me if you have seen this pattern i'm about to describe in your family then i want you to listen carefully it's always that the future is worse than the past you never have a situation where you leave certain things and go higher and higher you look at all your loved ones they once worked they once married they once had children they once had a house you are in a situation where the future is never brighter than the past it's always once upon a time this was happening i need to crush that devil from your life please help them once upon a time i was rich once upon a time i was married once upon a time i was on fire for god once upon a time i was a pastor i had a church no the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth ever brighter unto the perfect day when your tomorrow becomes worse than your yesterday there is a spirit reversing the equation lift your hands i want to pray for you in the name that is above all names i declare that any force from hell that is responsible for aborting a glorious tomorrow to take the events of the past and still bring it into your tomorrow right now at the count of three i declare that spirit must let you go one two three let them go now let them go now by the anointing of the holy ghost in the name of jesus christ hallelujah please just be patient with me we'll end now my spirit is heavy circles of repeated sicknesses i want to pray now it's not a normal thing whether it is hepatitis whether it is a blood related disease or whether it is every month malaria every month malaria every month typhoid you treat it it still comes back every month headache every month whatever it is hold on please the lord is showing me something i just saw like a pile of money and then i saw it disappear and the lord said there are people money physically disappears like lives their life i'm not saying you waste it you can keep ten thousand and come back and find seven thousand and nobody was in that house it's not just money items you can wash clothes and hang it you you didn't steal it you will come back you will not find it listen well this is a, a deliverance series just allow me to help that lady I'm seeing a lady in a vision now you were alone you washed your underwear in the night by the next day you didn't find two of them again it's gone from that day something happened in your life in a strange way severe menstrual pain is one of the things you started having uncontrollable pain in the name of jesus everything the devil has taken from anyone i decree and declare by the anointing of the spirit let there be restoration now let there be restoration now let there be restoration now The Lord is showing me someone. Every time you see someone die in the dream, a few weeks later it will happen physically. Now you have seen your loved ones. You saw them last week. You saw like a, somebody was announcing to you that I don't know if it's your mother or something that died. If we don't pray for you, it's going to happen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? I prophesy right now upon your life by the anointing of the Holy Ghost I command that death to pass over your family I command that death to pass over your family
Hallelujah. Just, just let me just talk about two issues. I'm struggling to share what God is showing me now. This has to do with a group of ladies. Listen. There is a lady here. Every time you see yourself in a dream, you are a man, not a woman. That's why I'm struggling to share what I'm saying. Physically, you are a lady. But every time you see yourself in a dream, it's like you are carrying the form of a man this thing has affected you even in the area of relationship if a guy looks at you and says i love you it's like it's like um it's it's like you feel as if you are gay it's it's like something has numbed the capacity to receive love as a lady because of that encounter it's a demonic thing that i have to pray for you for a very demonic thing I'm seeing like smoke this is strange and then it is it's just like moving around in the air wherever those groups of people are I don't believe it's just one person it's an operation of darkness in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands right now and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost be free from that demonic siege now be free from that demonic siege now Hold on. There is a lady, a physical person appeared to you, not a dream. I'm not talking of your dreaming. Physically, physical, like you are seeing me like this, appeared to you and was having a conversation with you. Appeared to you and was having a conversation with you and from that conversation your life was never the same again it looked like it was a woman that was appearing and talking to you like revealing to you some secrets that had to do with the past and from that day you started hearing voices even in the afternoon you can sit down and hear like people are discussing i need to pray for you if i don't pray for you very soon they will admit you in the hospital because they'll say you are talking and behaving like somebody who has a psychosomatic condition wherever that person is in the name of jesus i may not call you out because of time but i declare right now by the anointing of the holy spirit that devil that spirit in the name of jesus be free from it now i was going to pray for repeated cycles of sickness let that be the last let's pray if you know in this place that you find out that certain sicknesses never leave you they keep repeating cycles just place your hand on your chest I'm about to pray it doesn't matter what part of your body and what sickness you just place your hand on your chest I'm going to pray someone will shout under the anointing when that happens the anointing for this healing is not a sickness it's a pattern that God is breaking now the moment that shout happens, I will rebuke that and then we are done for the night. We will continue the miracle service. I will talk about it shortly. Thank you, Jesus. Just lay your hands there. The power of God is looking for one person. There's somebody that will shout. That's the shout. Right now, in the name of Jesus, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, every pattern of reoccurring infirmity reoccurring sickness whether it's a blood related disease every pattern i say it again of reoccurring sickness reoccurring disease right now by the power of the holy ghost i command the spirit responsible lose your hold now lose your hold now Lose your hold now. Lose your hold now. Lose your hold now. Hallelujah. 
in this series i gave you an instruction our time is gone i want to give you another one now please listen very carefully i told us we have been doing it i know a number of you may not have been so faithful just try to be consistent do it out of revelation at least 15 minutes in the night wake up and pray pray in the spirit declare the victory of christ just forget about whatever dream or whatever experience you're having just do what i'm asking you to do are we together now the next meeting we're going to be having here is a miracle service listen i'm taking our time our miracle service will not be on friday listen carefully our miracle service will be on monday are you getting what i'm saying now not this friday not this saturday not this sunday on monday please listen on friday you are going to fast on saturday everybody you are going to fast are we together at least if you cannot do to six minimum at least to 12 and that i believe it should even be our little children any adult here should at least be able to reach 12 or 2 you will not die so friday you are fasting saturday you are fasting are we together sunday you are fasting i want you to come on monday the miracle service we are going to start by praying for the sick so that we'll finish that it's going to be a night of intense deliverance it please intense anybody you truly love even if it's your loved ones no matter where they are if they can find their way please come medical reports bring it all these threat letters whatever just bring it and let's cry to the god of heaven to arise and walk wonders here the plague of death you can collect as many people's prayer requests even if they cannot come just collect it we are going to take at least 30 minutes to just agree and pray in tongues and charge the atmosphere when we come are we together is a prayer is a prophetic is a strong deliverance meeting i just the lord put that in my heart so please listen i'm saying in this media please take note including those outside friday you are fasting just break on your own you don't have to come here or if you have your little friends you can just meet and pray and sleep be very spiritual it's not when you should go to somebody's house and you are disturbing them it's, it's a week of spiritual emphasis we are trusting god to push through that that jericho that dagon must fall once and for all friday you are fasting please don't let food cheat you 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 don't die if you don't eat for a few hours saturday you are fasting sunday you are agreeing you are fasting monday you can eat and do whatever i like you to come here prayerfully and come here spiritual from the opening prayer to the praise and worship participate with all your heart are we together by the grace of god will make it the miracle service but i i will i will see the possibility if because of time we cannot make it both a communion and anointing service then i'll be patient the week that follows as we round up the series then we'll do it but we must combine it it must be a communion service and then an anointing service when i'll be teaching you now the forces of deliverance and the rest but this miracle service on monday i believe with all my heart for God to have given this message, he's going to do something strange. So it's not Friday, it's not Saturday, it's not Sunday, it's on Monday. But you fast on Friday, fast on Saturday. If you have loved ones, those are connecting. It doesn't matter what nation of the world. If they care to follow, they can follow in fasting and prayer. Are we together? Now, let me give you the instructions on how to pray. Am I boring you? Am I wasting your time? on friday because we have to pray with intelligence some of these anyhow prayers we do is what wastes our fasting we just fast and fast and pray and talk to ourselves and we don't get anything from it are we together if you can write please write and and please write and do it on friday your entire prayer for that friday is the mercy of god write it that's all that's all you are praying throughout friday by the grace of god just follow me 
I'm giving you an instruction in righteousness. This is not religion. The only prayer, look for scriptures that talk about the mercies of God. You are praying the mercy of God on your life, on your family. Please just try to follow this instruction. Just, just do as I'm teaching you. By God's grace, I will not mislead you. From all through your prayer, you are invoking the mercy of God. His mercies are new every morning. Lord, your mercy upon my life. Lord, your mercy upon my past. Lord, your mercy upon my family. I cry and I receive your mercy upon my ministry. Don't go and stop saying, oh God, the other day you said you were going to give me tea and bread. No, just leave all that one. Friday, the mercy of God. Are we together? Saturday is intense warfare. Intense warfare. You are going to take out time to pray and challenge the gates. Write down a list of all the things that constitute a challenge in your life. Whether it is delay, whether it is whatever, write it down. You are going to, you are going to pray warfare. There are many koinonia messages that you can get that relates to that. You can play along if you want and pray. Intense warfare. That means that as much as possible, aside from a few things that you maybe like school of ministry that we have in lectures if you don't have anything doing please discipline yourself this carelessness sometimes is why the devil prevails over us find somewhere beg your friend to give you access to his room or one corner go to one forest somewhere just stay somewhere and pray your life out pray against patterns and everything you have seen lord this is what has happened but I'm standing by the power of the Holy Spirit. So Friday, you are invoking the mercy of God. No, uh, Saturday, you are dealing with patterns and you are dealing with all of this. On Sunday, all you are doing is thanksgiving. That's all you are doing. You are thanking him for everything, for his mercies. You can thank him and praise him in a dance. You can thank him and pray, just play worship, praise him, whatever you have to do. And then on Monday, come with your heart. Write that Egyptian that has followed you and carry them and bring them here with you. And let the God of Bethel arise for us on Monday. So Friday, we are praying the mercy of God. Don't forget. Go and do the assignment yourself. Scriptures, look for scriptures. Go on, on, on Google and all of that. Use different references. Saturday is warfare. Saturday is not praise and worship saturday is not thanksgiving saturday you are engaging you are engaging the victory of christ mention situations one by one and take time to pray are we together and then sunday spend time singing dancing celebrating and thanking god and then on monday we are back please for our online community media make sure you remind us on thursday or friday remind us on what to do let's know you can put a, a a media montage or whatever it is you can add scriptures that can help us i could give you a few scriptures so that you guide us you can follow on facebook and twitter will be um, keeping you updated will be posting and all of that ask your loved ones i know some will say get out all these things i'm not doing don't fight them just leave them but as many they may not be able to make it on this ground but wherever they are around the world ask them to connect and also follow and you watch what god will do i'm leading you through the same way god led me to be free exactly the instruction god gave me and the things i did is what i'm introducing you to by the time i do the last series of the teaching you will know why i give some of these instructions are we together father we give you all the praise tonight you are god and there is none like you we submit to your wisdom we submit to your grace and Lord I know that you have not called the seed of Jacob to seek you in vain you have enlightened our minds tonight and Lord I thank you because even by your spirit there will be a performance in our lives lord even from tonight let your people begin to enjoy strange breakthroughs in the name of jesus christ lord this is a week of deliverance 
I pray that you end age-long captivities once and for all from our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I want to give someone an opportunity here to give his life or her life to Jesus Christ. You are here. You heard me preach. You heard the word of God come expressly. And you are saying, man of God, I need to make my ways right. Please don't be distracted. I know we are rounding up. Let's not distract those who want to give their life to Jesus. You are at overflow three, overflow two, overflow one, the main auditorium and those connected online. You are saying, Apostle, that nature that needs to be replaced, that miracle has not happened to me. Or you are saying, Apostle, I love Jesus, but at one point or the other things have gone haywire in my life and I need to make my ways right. Please, wherever you are, I don't want you to be ashamed. Please clear the way. Please clear the way. All of you standing at the way, please clear the way. Clear the eyes for them. Wherever you are, you want to make this decision, I want you to boldly get up and come right now, very quickly. Very quickly. If there is anyone, there has to be someone who is saying, man of God, I'm handing my life to Jesus. If you are outside, please clear the way for them as they come. Don't be ashamed. Make your way to the front right now. Make your way to the front right now. If there's someone coming, make your way to the front. If you are coming, overflow three. You can just walk to your projector stand. But overflow one, overflow two, and the main auditorium, make your way to the front. There has to be someone the Spirit of God is speaking to. Let's appreciate them. Don't be ashamed. Be bold. Rise up. Walk. Make your way and come to Jesus. Are there people like that? Clear the way for them outside. hallelujah please clear the way for them i still believe someone is coming there has to be someone if you're coming god bless you come quickly join them join them quickly those coming from the overflow outside quickly please hurry up if you're coming rush quickly 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 hallelujah god bless you if you're joining them come quickly thank you for this great decision i want you to lift your right hand high to heaven and say this from the depth of your heart god bless you my brother if you're coming my dear come quickly quickly and join them say lord jesus say after me passionately say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you that you are the son of god tonight i have heard your word and I declare that Jesus is Lord of my life. I declare that from today, I am a child of God. I'm born again. The life of Jesus is at work in me. I declare that the grace to walk in victory is mine now in Jesus name. Father, I thank you for these ones. They have come. And they have made this decision for you let this decision last, last last in their life oh look at this little child adorable child come my dear go to that man just go to that man he will lead you to christ that man sitting with a baby he will help you father thank you let this decision be real in their lives they will never be the same forward ever backward never even as you have prayed i crush every walkings of darkness over your life and I declare they are gone from your life now and forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for this decision. Please follow this gentleman. There are people waving their hands. I'd like you to follow all of them. This one under the anointing. Just carry him. Follow them. Everyone, please appreciate them very quickly. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget 
to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.